50 years ago, national service was compulsory. Every young man aged between 18 and 24 did two years in the army. From 1947 to 1961, over two and a half million young men were called up. For the conscripts, it was often their first taste of discipline. Move! Come on, move yourself! Come on! The gravy in the cookhouse moves quicker than you lot! Move it, move it, move it! You horrible people are now serving for Queen and country. What, what are you smiling at? Do you fancy me? Have you missed your woman already? Has anything fallen in your underpants recently? Stop laughing. Stop laughing. Pick up your kit and your crap and make your way through the gate to the furthest vehicle. Come on, quickly. These lads are volunteers. But 50 years ago, they had no choice. To find out if today's youth could survive a month of basic training, 30 volunteers were required. It's the opportunity of a lifetime to go back in time. Captain! Captain! Come on, quickly! What is that in your right hand? It's a football court. Book. Is it? Let me have a look. Get your hands out your pockets and I'll rip them off. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Don't call me, sir. I'm Corporal. That's See it again. Yes, Corporal. That's still not Face your front. Chins up. The training camp on the south coast has been fitted out to exact 50 specifications, from the sleeping quarters to the washrooms. Everything is as it was 50 years ago. <laughs> One section's billet. This is where I don't pay. Look at me. This is where one section will live. Come round, you idiot. There should be no reason whatsoever. What are you dancing for? What are you dancing? Don't smile at me. Do not smile at me. So, food, money, clothing. And we're going to train you to be soldiers. Sir, sir, walk platoon, walk platoon have arrived and are awaiting your address now, sir. That's Corporal Lens, stand up at ease, please. Thank you, sir. Listen in. Stand at ease, relax. Welcome to the National Service Training Depot, the Essex Regiment. My name's Captain Owen. The aim of the next four weeks is to turn you, a greasy, long-haired, idle rabble, into professional soldiers worthy of serving in the Essex Regiment. Listen in to your section corporals and your platoon staff. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir. Major! Yes, sir! OK, all I can do is wish you good luck, and I look forward to seeing your progress during the next four weeks. From now until their training ends in four weeks' time, the recruits of Lad's Army will have no contact with the modern world. Do you want any money? Obviously not. Go back in a minute, Sergeant. Okay, come on. Sunny! Sanford. Sanford what? S Nicky Sanford. No! Sanford Sergeant! Sa Sanford Sergeant. Don't keep waving your arms like a ballerina! What are you playing at? <sighs> Surname? Hampson. Hampson what? Hampson, sir. Sergeant. Hampson Sergeant! Hampson Sergeant! Sir! Webb. Webb what? Webb. That's my surname, sir. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get Bell back in! Get Bell back in! The recruits will be under the control of two British Army sergeant majors, Richard Nuyarkas, who served in Kosovo and Bosnia, Can I tell you to move? and no Joe Murray, well a paratrooper with active service in Sierra Leone and Northern Ireland. Luna. Yes, Corporal! Luna. Yes, Corporal! They'll be serving as 1950s corporals and have been fully briefed on how to conduct basic training as it was back then. A far cry from military practices of today. Lift your chin up. And the other one. I'm not getting paid. I just slide through in the sergeant's office. Now start running on the spot. Start running. Get your knees up. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. Now shouting again. 
and not getting paid, so your slates are in the sergeant's office. Thou shalt, I'm going to get paid, because I'm going to go in there and look smart in front of the sergeant. I ain't gonna get paid, so I ain't gonna go in and look smart from the sergeant. Did your mother give you lots of sandwiches and things to eat? No, Corporal. Well, it looks like she didn't. It looks like you ate everything. Did you steal food off people? No, Corporal. So why are you so large? Do you fancy me? No, Corporal. You a pifter? Definitely not, Corporal. Definitely not. How do you know? I just know, Corporal. Uh, I'm not, Corporal. You've not got those tendencies, I know. Definitely not, Corporal. You're definitely not a pifter. Definitely not good. Have you ever looked at me like a seductive blonde again? I'm going to rip your arm off and hit you with the soggy end, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. And don't f***ing laugh, you. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Do not laugh. Do you mean to me? Come here. You. Stop laughing. You want to laugh when the enemy's in your further out. Get your feet out there. Go down. Come down more. There, stand there. Put your arms out straight. Put your arms out straight. I must not laugh on parade. I must not laugh on parade. Keep saying it. I'll tell you when to stop. I must not you. laugh on Same parade. Same detail. I must not laugh on parade. I must not laugh on parade. Get your backs I against the wall. Get your backs against the wall. I must not laugh on parade. Now go like that with your hands. I must not laugh on parade. Keep going. I was not laughing for real. What do you never want to do? Get your ass down. I never want to laugh again, Corporal. Tell me. I never want to laugh again, Corporal. And actually. And actually, I'm quite stupid, actually. Get fell in. That's your last warning. Let's go. Mugs, China White. One. This way, mate. Nice one. Go. What are you doing with that? Why are you holding these? Where were they? Where were they? Why are they there now? Huh? Tell me. I thought I'd drop it, Corporal. What, like that? Or like that? Or like that? Which way did you think you were going to drop it? You were lucky. Yours never smashed. <laughs> you never smashed. <laughs> I'm, not. I'm not, I swear to God, Corporal. Go in store, go. What are you doing? Pick it up! Hello, <laughs> you? Get out there, pull me in right Happy boy! Happy boy! Why are you holding that? And, right, hold your arms out. Hold your arms out to there. There we go. There we go. Let me hear it. I must not laugh on parade, Corporal! In keeping with 50s military practice, the recruits are divided into two sections. Edmund, Poulter, Rossiter. One section Sanford. is run by Corporal Murray, the other by Corporal New Yorkus. No! Michael Honzik draws the short straw. Go! Ellis. Quickly! Gardner. I must not laugh on parade! I must not laugh it's on It's going to be a long, hard month for the recruits. I must not laugh on parade! <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone done any boxing? Because we're going to have to box. No. Nobody. Yeah, because there's a guy in there who can box, and and they've got that that guy in the suit looks about that big. So I'm not the tallest. You are. <laughs> it's going to be coming back in a minute, so uh, you know, keep somebody look out the window. I'm not sure. Attention! Leave your bags where they are, and get outside where I told you to form up every morning. Right, starting from you, pile in and get to your bed spaces. Do you understand? Yes, yes go, go. Ready? Go! In the following days, the recruits will be issued with uniforms and guns. But first, they have to learn to look after their billets. It's a matter of pride for the corporals that their section comes out on top. Everything that we ever do, we will beat them at everything. And I mean everything. What happens if I say it? We do it, Corporal! Which is the best section? One section, Corporal! Who is your best friend? I am Corporal! Laughing boy. Turn about. Get in. I do not want to see or hear 
from you until such time as you can stop laughing, be a part of this section and understand that I am training you to kill. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Lord, bro. Who is the best section? One, One section, section go, go, bro. After your evening meal tonight, I'm going to go through a few points of do's and don'ts within the camp and certainly do's and don'ts within the section. Do you understand? Yes, Lord, bro. You know the man. <laughs> the recruits are finally left alone to get to know each other. He makes me laugh! <laughs> I can't help it. It's still my idea. And you make me laugh. Like, whenever I say anything, you laugh. Oi, laughing boy! Get yourself you in there! Every I time you laugh, you, you, you look down and you go, look at him, and then you go, and you start cracking up. You've got to avoid eye contact. Look at Sky the whole time. Literally, look, look above him the whole there. time and ignore just, everything he says. Just block don't it out, like, completely, like, block everything else that he says. At least the corporal's brutality is helping break the ice. Even though they know they're wrong, they'll say they're right, and there's no point in arguing, there's no point in... And I think... There's no point in trying to explain ourselves. You can't look at him. If you look at him when he's talking to you, you'll go mad. If you don't look at him when he's talking to you, he goes mad. He's a wanker in the day, isn't he? He's a wanker, yeah. That means we're getting up about five, you know? Yeah, that parade, five a.m. Lights out half past ten. Yeah, I'm up at half past ten. I'm not up half past five, though. Be out there. I've got a Mars bar on my back. <laughs> Mars bar? I'm good for it. Did anyone like some Mars bar? As a treat. Shall I hide it as contraband? Authentic 1950s Mars bar. Yeah, Mars bar's always been Mars bar. Uh, I think you should stand by your bed. Good effort, guys. Good effort. Any problems? Any problems? No answer. No answer. You got poo in your face. <laughs> no heart pull. Swallow it. Nothing seems to be going right for Michael Honzik. Didn't I say? It? Didn't I say? I'd <laughs> 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 kill yourself now. You must have been waiting out there. Four bars. Oh dear. But he's watching you, brother. Watching you. It's not fair. <laughs> Left the end of the mattress. The first step to becoming a 50s killing machine is learning to make a military style bed. Right, just lay down. Fold the bottom bed down and under, like that. You fold this back 12 inches. Pillar always faces away from the main door. Anybody got any questions? Make your beds. The recruits must get it right. They'll be inspected in a few hours' time. Boys, uh, do I just fold them out under there? No, just just the end bits. Just the end bit, just where the bar is. And then you put the cover on the Then you put the blanket on top, and then you do the hospital corners as you did beforehand. One section has a secret weapon when it comes to bed making. Tom Wolfe. Sat in the bottom of there. Whatever was in there, corporal was in there when I received them by corporal. So you haven't cleaned it since you got it? No, corporal. Good God, it's moving, man. Look, is it an animal? Have you brought a pet with you? It might be an insect corporal. I think it's dandruff. Not that that'll affect you. What do you think's wrong with this bed? It's not central, corporal. One thing. It's a big, major thing. It really hits you as soon as you look at it. It's more than 12 inches, corporal. Oh, hang on, can you? Tell him. All in the bed, Corporal.
Each lad has been issued with one China mug. Any breakages will be replaced at their own expense. Corporal New Yorkis has a special way of dealing with any dirty ones. If it breaks, you clean it. Yes, when I tell you, yes, it will appear that I'm a better shot than him. Hun it. Hun it. Break it. Too late, you only get one shot. Give it back to him. Michael Honzik is still failing to impress his corporal. Time and a place, son. This is not it. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. You are no longer in civil life. You are now in the military. Yes, corporal. Look at me. Don't do it. Yes, corporal. Corporal New Yorkers doesn't want any jokers in his section. Go! He has a new strategy to get through to Michael. One section, I am sorry. 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 Hunnitz, come here. I am now getting pissed off with his laughter. I have a job to do. I cannot do that job if the comedian is constantly on my case. So I am no longer going to punish Hunnitz. From now on, you will all suffer every time he gives me a smart remark or he starts laughing. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Everybody up against the wall. Sit in position, go. Walk up to every individual and tell them that you're sorry you're putting them through this. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if you keep screwing up, I'm going to suffer. Louder! I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. What do you say? If I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. Make them stop, Corporal. Give me a reason to make them stop. Because it's not their fault. So why should I make them stop? Because I'm going to stop, Corporal. Are you sure? Yes, Corporal. I'll try my best, Corporal. Stand up. Corporal New Yorkers it's believes it's done the trick. At first he appeared to be a funny guy, and then it just became very monotonous. However, I think that we've... Uh, We've taken that out of him now and he just wants to be a part of the team and get on with it. Now that he knows it's me, he's like, any little thing I do, but he's like picking up on it. But I think he'll know now that I'm going to pack it in. So I don't want him to see me as like a clown, because I'm not. As the lads prepare for their first night, the reality of 50s basic training is starting to sink in. It's been gruesome in terms of how they've treated you so far, but that's just... Toughen you up, see who's going to take it. We thought the sergeant was bad, but when we finally got here and we met the corporals, I think I, I, I suddenly wanted, I thought, oh, heck, what have I done here? I wanted to, I wanted to go home. Night, Night, night John boy. Night, John boy. Night, John boy. Gentlemen, good night. Good night, corporal. Good night, corporal. <laughs>
In the early morning rush, there's something one section has overlooked. None of you, not one of you, can be asked to get your beds made. I find that extremely strange. That is just like taking the piss out of me. Now then, get yourselves ready for breakfast. Let's go. Do me a favour, because I'm a very busy man. Go and lob that outside. You want to strip your bed down before I get the opportunity to do it? You have 30 minutes before breakfast. When I come back in here, I expect this room to be absolutely immaculate, bedding and all. What do you do with your beds in the morning? Bed box, sir. So why aren't they there? Get on with it. If they can't get their blankets folded into what's known as a bed box, they won't be joining two section for breakfast. It's not much of an incentive. Cold, greasy egg sandwich at seven o'clock in the morning. It's not my usual staple breakfast, so. It's, uh, it's kind of hovering around here, so I'm trying to mentally get it to, to go down and stay there. When I start running, then you'll probably see it again. It'll, I'm sure it'll rear his ugly head and say hello again. Hopefully the bed boxes are now up to scratch. Look at that. If that was a face, it would be a smashed in face, wouldn't it? Because it is down at that end, up at that end, and sort of smiling in the middle. Should it be confused on the end of your bed? No, Corporal. Where would it be better suited being confused? Under my bed, Corporal. Really? OK, get your bed box and put it under your bed and talk to it and cheer it up. And when it comes back out, make it nice. It will not be happy unless you talk to it. Copeland! Talk to the friggin' bed box! OK, Corporal. Come on, bed box. Can make you bed. happy, come on. Come on, bed box. I'm gonna cheer you up. Is it ready to come out? No, Corporal. Well, get under there and make it ready. Faulkner, who is hiding in the edge of your blanket there? No one, Corporal. But you agree that there is room for somebody to get in there? I certainly do, Corporal. Call them! Who's in my bed box? <laughs> Copeland, talk to your bed box. Come on, bed box. Why are you all giggling? <laughs> Everybody, get in your lockers now. Everybody. Copeland, get out. Go round, close all the lockers. Copeland, quickly, quickly. I am not running a platoon, as you were, a section of clowns. However, that is the way it is starting to appear. Because you have no control at all. Do you? No, Do you? No, While one section sorts out their beds, Two section are taking their biggest step so far to becoming real 50 soldiers. In the 1950s, an army haircut was a rite of passage for National Service conscripts. Army barbers were famous for their interpretation of the short back and sides, a style which the lads army barbers seem to be taking to new extremes. Last one for the chop is Steve Daly. Unfortunately for Steve, the army barber only knows one style. Short. Just as it was 50 years ago, our recruits must undergo a thorough medical examination before joining the British Army. the section today, because it ain't happening, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Drop him! Hold your hands in front of you. Now, 
recover your manhood. Now, heels together, heels together. Really? To the doctor. The lads undergo a series of tests to ensure they're all fighting fit. Good eyesight, a healthy heart, and a sense of balance are all vital. As is the ability to cough on demand. Take your pants off, take your pants off. <coughs> Having passed the medical, the recruits head for the quartermaster's store. Here they're issued every bit of kit a 50 soldier would have had. We are giving you money. We are giving you clothes. We are giving you food. We are going to give you muscles that you never knew existed. Boots, ammunition, one pair. Water bottle, two pint blue enamel. Helmet, steel, one pound. Full full elastic, two pairs. Do you honestly think that you are hard enough to eyeball me? Do you think that? No, Corporal. Do you? No, Corporal! Got a girlfriend? Yes, Corporal. She's nice. Lovely Corporal. She love her? Yes, Corporal. You were going to say no there, weren't you? No, Corporal. You were going to say no there, weren't you? No, Corporal. I assume now that if you drop anything between here and the billet, that belongs to me. Over to the block. No. Look, you try, you don't try hard enough. These are some, some sort of insult to the fashion industry as we know it, so, yeah. Yeah, these are the latest designer pants. And uh, you've got gym kit, you've got nice little pimp soles to match your skinhead. A bit of a perverts type jacket there. I can't describe it, it smells old and it just smells of, um, of pain, like, in terms of you're gonna get put through it in this. The lads will be reunited with their own clothes at the end of basic training. But from now on, it's uniforms all the way. The transformation is complete. Not everyone got a perfect fit. I think they've purposely done it. No doubt. Have you got a small one? Yeah. Look. My arms are up here. That's going to fit me, isn't it? Yeah, I reckon it will. The trousers are still a bit big, but... Nice one. That must fit you. If it does, and this one's smaller. Good lad. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Jordy, you look fit to be in the Queen's Army. So do you, France? When the uniforms, when we got our uniforms, and, and with the shaving of the heads, which at the time there was a rush of adrenaline. There's mine. Uh, and everyone was doing it, and then, then we finished it. We came out and we looked at each other and thought, crikey, we're in the army. Don't move! Yesterday, these young men were students, postmen and shop assistants. From now on, they are Waterloo Platoon, Essex Regiment. Today, any personal belongings get sent home. The lads are only allowed to keep three items each, as long as they were around in the 50s. Well, the second I walked in the camp, he kicked my football away, so I haven't seen that again. I was going to keep my book, but I'm not allowed that because I wasn't from the 15th. So I've got photographs from back home. And Teddy Bear, my girlfriend, gave That's my good luck charm. Reminds me of her, and I don't know, she sits in there all quiet to herself. It'll be the corporal's decision what they can keep. All the boys are inside and they're all talking amongst themselves. So I'm listening at the door to see if I can hear what they're talking about. That will definitely have to go over the office. What year is that? This month. Actually. No. I'm quite stupid, actually. Anybody else got any confessions? 
Who's up with her, your brother? That's me. Can you not cut one out? I can do, Corporal, yes. Do you yes. mind doing that? Cut one out and get rid of it, because it's just not authentic. It, it was my birthday yesterday, and um, because I couldn't, didn't get to celebrate it with my family, um, they, uh, my mum bought me a cake, just a small cake. So I put it aside and thought, okay, well I'll, I'll save that until I'm really tired and eat the sugar. And uh, it's been taken off me now, so I won't get it back till the end of training. Gentlemen, anything else? That is the last of the niceties. If I find anything from here on in, then the shit will hit the fan. Right, lads. No, 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 no. Shut Are you kind of bad? It's got no label on it and it's from my girlfriend. That really is like what you got there. At least Ross Pittman's birthday cake is in safe hands. Mm. Right, everybody down here. For the next four weeks, the lads will be responsible for keeping their barracks clean. But first, they need to be shown how. First of all, you sweep the area. Their area swept. And lay down the polish. Stand on a blanket and walk along the given area. I want the whole floor polished, bumpered. Any questions? No, Crumple. Good. Tomorrow there's an inspection by the sergeant. One section needs to get moving. We've got to polish the floor, which people keep walking all over with the boots. But it's our first attempt, so we're not going to get it right first time. On a routine locker search, Corporal Murray has found some contraband belonging to the opposite sex. Gentlemen, have we got a poofter in this section? No, 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 no! Haven't we? Well, everybody, turn round and look this way. Tell me... Who's these are? If you don't admit it, I'm going to have yous outside and I'm going to beast everybody. Because I know what locker I took them out of. Whose are they? So you're not going to tell me? So you're not going to admit it? Get outside now. <coughs> We're going to have a little game, aren't we? We're going to have a relay race. You're going to keep running round that block with both of these in your arms until every one of you drop. Take them. Keep your arms up. Stand by. Go. Round the block. Hurry up. Get your arms up. Not get the moral courage to own up. Put your nose on the ground. Stand by. Take the weight. Take the weight. Jog on the spot. Don't worry about that. Get the knees up. Get them up. They'll be beasted until the corporal gets a confession. Who's are they? Right, line up against that wall. Come on. If you think this is pissed off, gentlemen, it gets harder. Trust me. One simple question. One man to own up. One man. Whose are they? Give me the answer. Sam Webb has owned up. Stop. Stand up. But Corporal Murray isn't convinced he's telling the truth. Where is your bed? In there. At the end. On what? At the end where? Top left. Top left. These were found in the fourth or fifth locker down on the left. He said the moral courage to admit for something that he didn't do. Because they're not his, are they yours? 
No colonel. I'm not no, a I'm colonel, I'm corporal. I mean, no corporal. So that's what you call a friend. So the culprit is still in the munchies. And you have got, got till after dinner to find out who's they are. Because if I don't get a name, I will keep you up all night doing that. Get inside there, get your uniform sorted down. Well done. Captain! Captain! File in from the left. Buy what you need to buy. Go. For the time being, the lads are off the hook, which means a trip to the Nafi, a social club and tuck shop for the forces. It also means getting used to 50s money. If you want something for shilling, you want a toilet roll and it's a shilling, you can either give me two sixpences or you can give me that. Right. Or you can give me a half a crown and I'll give you two bob back. <laughs> He's more confused See? now than when he was Yeah, that's what I mean. Because I want to know what each one of them is worth. Just think about old money, not new. Can I have um, envelopes and paper, some razor blades, and <coughs> some toilet paper? They're so nervous. They really are. But it's their first day, isn't it? But if they can just let their hair down and get to know each other, really, because that's what the daffy's about, isn't it? Just to relax and, and, and just let their hair down. In this morning's rush to be ready for inspection, one lad forgot something vital for a 50s recruit. Corporal Murray doesn't miss a thing. Did you have a wash this morning? I didn't have time, Corporal. So you didn't have time, so that's why you were stinking, was it? Yes, Corporal. Listen to the medic. Take your clothes off. So Get a move on. Bad as you're making now. Quick. Let this be a lesson. If you can't look after yourself in barracks, how are you expected to look after yourself in the field? You will become a casualty. The next time this happens, I will use a brush with very hard bristles to scrub you. Whose knickers are these? Two o'clock in the morning springs to mind. The mine corporal. The mine corporal. corporal. The mine corporal. The mine corporal. Stop it. There'll be no going to bed until the culprit owns up. Start sparking tomorrow, gents. I've not got a name for these. I know whose they are, because I know what locker I took them out of. I just want them to have the moral fibre to hit one up in front of each section. The mine corporal. Why didn't you own up before? Don't know, corporal. So if I asked you to come forward and attack an enemy machine gun post, you wouldn't do it, would you? Because you'd just sit there where one of the other muckers took the rap. You've got something to use as a cloth now, haven't you? Yes, Corporal. Carry on, gents. The Corporal seems happy with the latest confession. He threatened to get us up at 2 o'clock in the morning, so I just said they're mine. And he said, thank you for admitting it. And I just went, oh, my God, because uh, they're not mine. <laughs> As day two comes to an end, one recruit is starting to crack. Paul Clayden, who earlier received the shower punishment. I miss my family more than I thought I would. Uh, the fact that I haven't... Been able to eat properly has weakened me considerably. If it's this bad now, I'll be in a I'll be a wreck by the end. Of, by Sunday, I will just be in pieces, and I I'd rather leave now than try and keep what little sanity I have left for I have a complete shutdown. When I say go, everybody will start running on the spot. Stop shivering, control it. Don't think about it, it will not happen. Start running on the spot. Never mind what your willy is doing, let it do it. You're all men, keep running on the spot. Don't you die in me today, do you understand? Yes, go, bro! Don't you ever die in me? Yes, go, bro! No! 
Corporal Nyokas is off sick, leaving both sections at the mercy of Corporal Murray. Both sections have been up most of the night preparing for their barrack inspection. Without their own corporal, one section will have to work even harder to impress Corporal yeah. Murray. You want, you want to try it one? Hey, best boys! Who's the duty recruit today? Corporal! Come here. On, Zig. Yeah, you better start getting a grip of your section today. Yes, Corporal. Understand? Because if yes, I get any bad reports, and caught on the Yorkers, because back from having his medical, you shall be held responsible. Yes, Corporal. So start getting a grip, and you start working for them! Ten minutes to the deadline, and there's still no great sense of urgency in one section. Three days into basic training, and two sections seem to have their act together. Get your mugs in your hands. Stop shaking. Stop shaking. Calm down. Turn them round. Don't think about it. Don't look at that. Show me inside your mug. Two section have got the basics right, but Corporal Murray is obsessed with attention to detail. Hold your diggers up. I'm not going to bend down. I've got you, daily. What can you see in that knife? Nothing, yeah? Attention to detail. Is that clean? Well, there's a bit there as well. Clean? No, Corporal. Oh, when did we wash this? So if I take my hand off this, it's going to be very dry, isn't it? Yes, Corporal. It is. My hand will be dry. No, Corporal. Is that clean? Yes, Corporal. Is it? Two section are learning the hard way. It's a mugs game trying to get one over on their Corporal. Tell me. That is clean to you. No, Corporal. Don't look down there, stand still and look to your front. Just go, bro. Harrison, you actually done something right, but I've not looked to the back yet. Hold it up so I can see it. Turn it round. Show me your mug. Now we're going to get a full house. Remember I said about paying attention to detail? Well, well, well. You know the standards that I require in this section? I start by making sure that we are better than they are. And they, for what I've seen this morning, are nothing. Look at them. Need cleaning, don't they? Yes, go, bro. Turn them over. Leyland, look at them. Yes, Corporal. Good morning, Mr. Spears. How are you? Fine, thank you, Corporal. Well, well. Somebody that actually washes his hands. Turn him over. Turn him down. Well done. Thank you, Corporal. It was pure luck that, you know, I, you know, you know, ten minutes before the inspection, I washed my hands. I mean, it was nothing that, uh, you know, I was trying to be clever. Um, but it's nice to get praise. Um, you know, it does help. Two section have set a high standard. How will one section compare? Bye, beds, boys. Ponzi, get in front of me now. Get a move on. Get out of here. What do you call? This. Crap, Corporal. Crap. What do you call this? Crap, Corporal. 
crap! Why isn't it cleaned up? Why? What did I say to you in the cookhouse? Because you are not getting a grip of them. Corporal Murray served with the Paras in Northern Ireland and Sierra Leone. He won't be beaten by one section. This is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. You have let your section commander down in a simple thing like a daily inspection. When I say go, you will sprint round this block. If any man touches me, when I say go, you'll go round this block and you will sprint. You will sprint so fast that it will hurt. Because if you don't, I will keep you running until every man can run no longer. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal! Go! Keep moving! Again! Get in now! Get in! Move your fat! Move your fat! Get Move! Again! Again! Never make it up! Again! Stop! Well done! You better start working as a team. We are still a platoon. You are not performing. I wouldn't take you into battle over in that field with dummies. You are a bunch of dummies. What are you? A bunch of dummies, Corporal! You get that cleaned up by 8.20. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! And I want to see you moving like shit off a shovel. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal! Get a move on. Get him Come going. On, the floor, please, and everyone start doing the breadbox. It's just disgusting. In fact, it's they've not even tried at all. 100% failed, and they can only get better. So a short, sharp lesson to be ready in time. And I'm sure Cotton Iokis will then um, express his sympathy. Shall I say? At 10 minutes time, you are going to meet the platoon sergeant, Sergeant Sullivan. When he comes out, you will scream at the top of your voice. Good morning, Sergeant. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Shall we practice? Yes, Corporal! Good morning, Sergeant! Louder. Good, Good morning, Sergeant! Louder. Good morning, Sergeant! That's as loud as it needs to be. By the right. Quick. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. The platoon sergeant was a terrifying figure in the 1950s army and not just for the recruits. Any mistakes they made meant the corporals got it in the neck. Sullivan, I am your platoon sergeant for the next four weeks. My aim is to try and teach you to be soldiers. And in particular, teach you drill. Out! Come in! Smart! Come in! Still, don't move. Once you come to attention, do not move. Web. Sergeant, Webb, what's this? Keep the body straight, over, back in. Salute! One, two, three, one. Dash! One, two, three, one. Don't swing your arms. Tap! One, two, three, one. Eagle, in both turns. Go! In three days, the lads have mastered some of the basics, like standing to attention. But they've got a long way to go yet. And like most things in basic training, that involves a lot of shouting. Web! Right, other than Web, who you for the left? Tired! One, two, three, one! You bad! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Come 
much. Three, short, sharp, shit up, pace it. One, two, three, one, two, three, 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 You address any of the non-commissioned officers in this depot, you will come to attention. Do you understand? Yes, yes Sergeant! You didn't because you didn't move. Down! 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 Neil, you know that! Neil, get, get down. down! Down! Now! Get up! Too slow! Down! Get up! Too slow! Down! Stay down! Stay down! I didn't tell you to move! Get up! Get in rank, stand easy, stand easy. Do you understand me? Yes, Sergeant! Good, you don't! Get down! All you have to do, sunshine, to stop this happening is the next time I told you, you put your feet together, you shout in and then now, and then you uh, reply to me. Do you understand? Yes, Sergeant! Get up! Stand at ease, stand. Get up, stand at ease, stand easy. What was your occupation in civilian life, Neil? I was a fireman, Sergeant. Notice? Yes, Did anyone hear me. anything? Did you hear anything, gentlemen? No, no Sergeant. Sergeant! Neil, get round this square three times. Move now! Double away! Cut, Murray. Carry on. Sergeant. Carry on. Sergeant! Well done. Well done. You've worked hard this morning. That is the way we want everything that you do from now on. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Left! Turn! One, two, three, one! By the right, quick. March, left, right, left, right, left, right, left! It's the first time we met the platoon sergeant, and the thing is, he's not too bad, actually. I, I expect him worse, but when he starts on these weird, squeaky little calls, it's like, what was that? You don't understand, you, you just got to go by a number of words. Like, when he wants you to like, pull your arms in, all I know is that he shouts one... <laughs> he, shouts, <laughs> he shouts one word, and that's how I know. I, don't, I ain't got a clue what he's saying. Not one clue. It wouldn't be too bad, though, if you're on your Todd, like, but because you're in front of so many people, mm. it's just ten times, like... The nerves just, just, yeah. just feel kind of mad for letting everyone down as well if you need to do something stupid. <laughs> In the 1950s, national service was compulsory and many of the lads were unfit. Our boys have got just four weeks to get into shape. Three ranks, three ranks, three ranks. Afternoon, lads. We are your physical training instructors. We've got one objective during your basic training. It's to make you fit. Fighting fit. Some of you are patently less fit. You'll have your work cut out, gentlemen, over the next four weeks. Work hard and we will help you. We are now going to assess, assess your physical fitness and strength with a series of tests. Oh, yeah. Get yourself up, get yourself up. 40 oh, seconds. Come on, don't rest. 29, dig deep, dig deep, 30. 31, 32, 32. Elbows back, shoulders back, elbows back, shoulders back, elbows back, shoulders back. Put some effort into it. Larger circles get. Matt in the middle there, head up. That's good, well done. Head up, look forward. One lad is finding the exercise especially demanding. 21-year-old genetics student Chris Hampson has been building up his beer belly for the last four years. Go! Come on, in the back. Get the knees up, get the knees up, let's go. Come on, in the back. 
The race is too much for Chris. Slow the breathing down. Out. Good man. And out. Good man. Look at me. All right. Good man. Walk in, take your time. Chris has been sent back to recover, while the others complete the one mile run. 620, 621. All right. Okay. Are you the last man? Good. Yes, you and me run together. Let's go. Needlecroft expert Adam Spires is more used to cross stitch than cross country. These two guys coming in are just about all through. It's a good old round of applause, make them feel good about this. Come on, lads! Yeah. I came in with Spires at the end of the run um, and encouraged him over the last few hundred yards. He is gutsy and he was working bloody hard at the end of that, that last few hundred yards. And I think there's another man that might find confidence. Did really well, mate. Did really well. Yeah. And that was a taster. It's going to be a lot more running to come in the next month. A lot of it's going to be a heck of a lot longer than that. Rehydrate yourselves, then get on the back of the truck. Water and truck. Go! Who's the best section? Water section! <laughs> Four out of the first five in the running. Four out of the first five. Four out of the first five. That's only because we're at the back helping your bikes out. I don't want to see lazy asses like you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the best section? Water section. You'll be outside running your bloody knickers. <laughs> After failing to finish the run, Chris Hampson is fretting. I think everyone's finding it difficult. Uh, <coughs> well, that's what we're here for tonight. As he says, it's not a holiday camp. It's here to be difficult. I'm not very fit. I'm letting the section down a little bit. By uh, not being able to run as fast as everyone else. So that's a problem for me. Aaron Larson is finding it hard to cope too. He's turned to fellow recruit Tony Ellis for support. I know, I know how tough it is, but I think you are, you know, this is pretty much the hardest thing that a person can go through. And I think you'd just be so proud of yourself if you can get through it and do it. It sounds, I know it's, it sounds easy to say, but it is only four weeks. And True. four weeks of your life, and you look, you're, 10 years later, you'll be able to look back and mm. that four weeks will seem like a day, it will seem like nothing. But the fact, the memory that will stay with you is the memory that you did it. And you can do it, I know you can. They treat everyone like shit and they own a shell, but they want everyone to get through. And, but if we're all here at the end of it, it'll be happy. The lads have struggled to get through today. 10, get into bed. And with Corporal Nyokas due back in the morning, things can only get worse. Kosovo and Bosnia veteran Corporal Nyokas is back. I was away yesterday on medicals. Um, Corporal Murray very kindly took over my section for me. Unfortunately, on my return, Corporal Murray tells me that my section was not up to scratch. Gentlemen, good morning. Happy Sunday. Why aren't you out of bed? You, what do you do when I walk into the room? What do you do? So why don't you? I came in this morning to find that, in fact, everything that Court Murray had told me was completely true. And there is uh, a lot of lethargicness kicking around the section, and they just don't seem to be sparking. Why aren't you outside? Why are you standing there? Five, four, three. 
As in the 50s, both sections must compete against each other in virtually everything. Even getting up is a race. 11, if one section beat you, stand by. If they beat you, stand by. People are still standing around when they should be outside. Why is that? What is going on? Why are you not up yet? Get away! Do not ever, ever come outside without anything on your feet. Why not? What? Dirty corporal. Speak up! You get dirty feet, corporal. If my section are slower than his, slacker than his, or grubbier than his, then it, it reflects on me and the way that I'm instructing the recruits. I don't want to look bad in front of Corporal Murray or the platoon sergeant. Look, they beat you. Why did they beat you? That'll be the last time that they beat you at anything. Because if it doesn't, you will suffer. When I say down, you will adopt a position. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Down! No! Hurry up! I take great offence at waking up a room full of men and somebody has the audacity to stand by the end of the bed with an erection. Who was it? It couldn't have been you. You can't get an erection. If it happens again, I will kick it until such time as it becomes unerect. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Hygiene! Hygiene! What did I teach you in the mornings? Quick brush of the arm, put some crack of the ass, couple. Crack of the ass and the... Willy Cuddle. So get it done in the sink. Only takes two seconds. Wash and get them up. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Sprint. We made a big ball up this morning by losing to one section. Real big balls up, he's not happy about that. I'll just have to pull it back, make sure it's uh, up to scratch again. Leave that, leave it, you little shit. I am trying my hardest to be compassionate because today is Sunday, but you are all making it very difficult for me. I would like to know that you will all get a grip and prove to me that you are one section and one section are the best. Is that at all possible today? Yes, Corporal! If it is not, tell me it is not, and I will piss off and find myself another section that will listen to me. Do I stay or do I go? Stay, Corporal! Are you sure? Yes, Corporal! Dodd. Yes, Corporal! Why is this section continuously letting me down and embarrassing me? You're still shit, Corporal! Why are you still shit? We need to try harder, Corporal! And is that going to happen? Yes, yes Corporal! Corporal. This is it. From this moment onwards, one section will be the best at everything. Your room will be better, your kit will be better. You will be first, you will be smarter. Those pricks are watching. Don't let me down. Yes, Squad! Yes, Squad! Shun! Hey! Better. When I see quick march straight in the cookhouse. Quick, back, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right Have you shaved this morning? Right. No, Corporal. What? No, Corporal. Get in there, get undressed, get your washing kit and stand at that door. Do you understand me? Yes, Corporal. Move now. I will not be embarrassed in front of other NCOs in this regiment. Yes, Corporal. Where are you, boy? He's not happy. I don't know why he's not happy, but he's not happy. Anyway, are you I haven't ready? Yeah, Corporal. You are ready. Hurry up. Hey, stop, hey, stop, hey, stop. I've never done anything like this before, at all, ever. So I don't know what I'm doing. All I know 
is that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it wrong. We're miles behind two section. We're so far behind two section, it's untrue. But to, to me, it seems like Corporal Murray is helping them a lot better, a lot more than Corporal Nokes is helping us. It's just our own, it's our own fault. I'm shaking like a leaf. And I've let the squad down again. You will now be referred to as Shower of Shit. It's good to bring a section down to its lowest in order to let them know that they are, in fact, absolute crap. And then you build them up from there. As each man walks through the door, you will announce that Shower of Shit section have arrived. Good morning to section. Do you understand? Yes, no, no. What will you shout? Shower of Shit section has arrived. Good morning to section. By the right, quick march! Duff, fight! Duff, fight! Duff, fight! Duff, fight! Duff, fight! Shower of shit section has arrived! Good morning, two section! Shower of shit section has arrived! Good morning, two section! Shower of shit section has arrived! Good morning, two section! Shower of shit section has arrived! Good morning, two section! Shower of shit section has arrived! Good morning, two section! Good morning, shower of shit section! Get on the floor now, you! Get on the floor! And you! Get on the floor now! Quickly! Why are you on the floor? I have a very on corporal. Why are you on the floor? Very on inside, corporal. As soon as the section has sat down, you may get up. Why are you dodging around him? If he's in your way, stand on him. If you get up from the floor and that is not done up, I will throw you back down there, do you understand? Stay down here until he's done, Corporal. I know you will. <laughs> Good morning, Corporal! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Corporal. <laughs> Sorry, Corporal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At ease! <laughs> You seven will go to the shit house. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Every 1950s soldier was given menial tasks known as fatigues. The point was to instill obedience. Sit in there and get them clean. I don't care what you have to do. Use the brush, good lad. You want to see any dirt? We have no chocolate marks. Do you understand? Round the back, there is grass. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! You will get your scissors and you will cut that grass. And all that grass will be done. And how are you coping? Uh, I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm just generally waking up and doing what they tell me and trying not to think about anything at all. I've been feeling a bit unwell lately, actually. I get... I feel like I'm going to be sick every time I have something to eat or drink. Uh, I don't know why, but never mind. I think everybody's a little nudged because we, we are an absolute shower of shit at the moment. <laughs> so I think uh, we, we all need to up the ante a bit. I think we've been coasting. I think we need to realise that this isn't a game. And uh, unless we take it seriously, we're going for four weeks of a very hard time. And also, once you're down as a section, once the section's been given a bad reputation, it's very hard to shake it off. We don't want to be known as shower of shit, do we? Because we're trying our hardest. We want. So we'll flip it and tighten yeah, it. Yeah, we want people to put the effort in. I could call me being called Dodd by the court, but I didn't want to come in here and have these lot call me Dodd. My name's not Dodd, my name's Jamie. And, you know, if I'm going to have any sense, if I'm going to keep me cool, and if I'm going to keep strong and keep going, I need somewhere, I need, I need to keep some sense of me about this whole thing. I need to be Jamie. You will now, this man, you will now all get into battle dress, ready for church. You understand? Yes, Corporal! Why aren't you getting ready? You will be the smartest shower of shit that goes into the church. Believe me, you need God on your side in the next four weeks. Because he is the only one that is able to protect you. And that is only if he strikes me down by lightning. 
What are you doing to him? It looks disgusting from behind. Was you laughing at me, Addy Bayo? No, Corporal. Relax. <coughs> Nobody's going to shout at you here. If you want to fall asleep, do whatever. This is your moment. Can I introduce myself? I'm David Rindle, and I'm the Padre. In the army, the clergy are known as Padre. I am not part of the shouting machine because you've had enough beasting. Uh, who's, who's fed up with it? <laughs> well, at least you're being honest. OK, just show the NCOs that you're not beaten by having a good hymn. We're going to start with Guide Me, O Thy Great Redeemer. Stand up. Replacement Paul Eagle is being made to catch up on his drill. What the heaven hell was that? Are they in the position of attention? No, Sergeant. Good. Bring them in. Bring them in. Better. Sit down, please. <laughs> part of what is happening to you is you're being made to be part of a team. What I'm here to assure you is that although you are part of a team, you are individuals. Can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Can you count up to ten? Yeah. Yes, okay. You count to ten and I'll make them come out. You ready? One, One two, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. You'll have to keep counting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I'm the only person I've ever met who's actually been able to do that. I have to confess, I've never met anybody else who wanted to do it. But it does make me unique, and that's what I want you to remember. In the sight of God, you are unique, you are yourselves, and you must never lose sight of that, nor would the army want you to lose sight of that. So in these coming weeks, which are going to be some of the toughest you've ever known, you'll experience some of the biggest agonies you've ever known. But on the other hand, you'll be part of a team, and an amazing team, and that will stay with you for the rest of your lives. So... Chris Hampson stays behind after chapel. Everything I'm doing is just getting harder hard and harder. And I just I can't do it. Do you feel very close to giving up? Yes. Not that close. Mm. Don't worry, just let it out. Does it make it any easier to talk about it or make it worse? Yeah. Yeah. I really don't want to go to work. You don't want to? I don't want to go. You don't want to go? But yeah. I do want to go. Yeah, both the same. <sighs> he's he's um, in tears in the chapel of the man. Obviously struggling because he wants to stay. He wants to see you, and I said I'd come and speak to you. He's worried about letting his section down. I said, everybody's feeling that. You're not alone. You've had three days in. It has been traumatic. You know, stick with it. In no way, shape or form, are you letting this section down? As much as you might think, you might feel yeah. that at the minute. Uh, that's, I know you, you've said that. Honestly. I, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not dispute what you say, but I don't, I don't believe that. I, I know, you, I know, I know you, you're uh, saying you can't believe it. I can't. Shush. It's all right. It's just, I feel that I know it's going to be me. I know it's going to be something that I don't do or that I do do. It won't be you. It will be, it will be. I know, I can feel it. But that's in your own mind. It's not yeah. right, just relax. For some of the other boys, the toughest thing is being away from home. When you finally spend, you know, lights out, finish everything you do, and you're in bed asleep, then that's, that's the worst time. That's when you think of hope. I'm just going to get with Daniel. Just, um, uh, we always only just moved in two months ago, and so, 
Like, it's quite difficult now. I've given up a, a double bed, king size duvet, brand new flat, leather settee, bed, freedom to do what I want. During the day, you don't get a chance to think about it really. You're always like doing stuff. And then at night time, like just before you go to bed, whatever, you, look, you have a look at the photos. And I just fell asleep crying. Like, and uh, at home, I'm like quite a tough bloke. And uh, like, if anyone know me watching this, is gonna like be really, really shocked that I'm acting in this way. See, one thing that you realise in people early is intelligence. Right. Let's get one thing straight. The question of the obvious thing is not fitness. It has nothing to do with it. It's to do with the attack. And it's to do with the trail. They are two big main factors, the cleaning as well. Not the from weeding and all that shit, you know what I mean? But, but, but that, that's what that, all, all the, 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 the beasting and the weeding is for, isn't it? To, to make us do what you tell us to do? Yeah, it's, it's still discipline. But I just didn't think that it would affect me this much and so soon as well. I just, I just want to go now, but at the same time, I know I won't. Oh, I wish. If, if one felt that I was just a phone call, that would just make it that much easier. This is shit, man. You all right, bro? Well, don't worry, man, I feel the same. She's just talking about his family, man. Come here, you and you having a smoke? You're gonna have a smoke, yeah? Come have a smoke, eh? You got one? Come have a cigarette, come on. Come on, man, left eye. All done, you all right, bro, yeah? You promise me, and I'll promise you, that at the end of this, when we're on that pass out square, that we have a beer together, and then you can say, yeah, cheers for that. Yeah? All right? All right. Promise me. I promise you. All right. Thank you very much. Tomorrow morning, will be the platoon sergeant's first barrack room inspection. Can anybody tell me what your bed layout and the state of your room will look like? Perfect, Corporal! Perfect and immaculate are good words. I like to hear them. Move your locker. Did you clean under here this morning? No, Corporal. Gentlemen, I'm getting slowly pissed off. The platoon sergeant is inspecting tomorrow. And I don't like it. Because my f***ing head is on the block. And he will rip my head off because of your incompetence. I told you before, I don't care about the shower of shit next door. You will move every locker in here and every bed in here and sweep and bumper till it's absolutely immaculate, because that's what he's going to do. Get your irons and your cups in your locker and get outside now. Now it is just gone a quarter to two. By Ten past two, the room in there will be out here, replicated. Go! If the corporal comes, I've died. This is meant to be a day of rest. This is what I don't understand. They say to us, you've got plenty of free time tomorrow. They think, oh, plenty of free time, nice one. There's plenty of free time to cut oh, grass. Oh, 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 oh
and was a little harsh and a little strong with them, purposely because of the way that they'd messed up yesterday. But I have to say, they just started working like a team, which, which knocked me for six, really. They made me relent on my decision to be harsh with them all day. The Nafi was the military social club. There's a ban on beer the first week, but the boys can live it up with a mug of tea and a bun. Hansik and Wolf are going to sing a song. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. There's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. I'm trying hard not to show it, baby. It's a big day for the lads of Waterloo Platoon. There's a barracks inspection. Corporal Nyokas is poised, ready for action. Okay, okay. Rise and shine. Might have broken mother's heart, but you're not going to break mine. Get rid of it. Outside, three ranks. Hold in your washing and shaving equipment. Go! Anybody out after me gets a dustbin lid. Once again, one section are a shambles. It doesn't all go well for the sergeant's big inspection. Stand still. Is the iron broken? No, Corporal. So why isn't the kit ironed? You got a button undone. Baton today, what happens tomorrow? Safety catch corporal. Then what do you do? Kill someone, corporal. Why? All because? Lack of attention to detail, corporal. This is completely ridiculous. Who's is that? <laughs> you people are taking the absolute piss out of me. Get away for your breakfast, quarter to eight, platoon sergeant's inspection. Few people pass, it will be a miracle, an absolute miracle. I will be surprised. He may just walk in, look at the state of your dress, and then throw me out. Get away from your breakfast now. Quarter away, stood by your beds. Immaculate. At breakfast, the lads get a lesson in military efficiency. During national service, disgusting combinations of food were often served in the same dish to save time. On the menu today, porridge topped with watery scrambled egg. It's, it's a strange combination. I just the whole texture is oh, it's not very nice. And I just I keep gagging on it. As long as you put enough sugar on it, it's all right. Just eat the egg off first and put a load of sugar in it. Then 
interesting anyway. <laughs> Not quite my crunchy that cornflakes, but it's all right. As the lads tuck in, Corporal Nyoka sneaks into two sections billet. He wants to find out why they're doing so much better than his section. As scruffy as it is, mine seems more disorganised scruffy. For instance, mine have a couple of bed boxes made. These have got about five or six. Although one of them, and I think it's that one down there, leaves a lot to the imagination. Yes, it is that one. It, it's just horrible. However, Court Murray will undoubtedly deal with that. I'm glad to say I have no bed boxes in that condition. That is not to say that my bed boxes are perfect, they are not. Although Copeland's appears to be getting a lot better. Ah. Uh, he talks to his. You put in brown sauce in it. Anything to disguise the taste of that. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh. Gentlemen, does anybody have any complaints or any observations about the food? No problem. No. 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 How come the egg's on top of the porridge purple? How come the egg is on top of the porridge? Because if they put the egg underneath the porridge, you wouldn't see it, would you? <laughs> Therefore, you wouldn't know you had an egg. So the chef very kindly places it on top for you, so that you can see it, so that you know you're being nourished. <laughs> One section, I've said, they require bigger helpings of food. Do you feel the same way? I think some of us feel like that, Corporal. Do you? Yes, yes Corporal. So it's a platoon thing, you want more food? Yes, yes Corporal. Then I'll Please. speak to the chef and I will sh ensure that at lunchtime you have more food. Thank you, Corporal. Thank you, Corporal. Sorry? Thank, Thank you, you, Corporal. Corporal. Get Yesterday, the lads met Sergeant Sullivan on the parade square. It wasn't pretty. Get up! In real life, he's a sergeant major of 22 years' experience and has served with the British Army in Germany, Bosnia and Northern Ireland. Now, Sergeant Sullivan is looking forward to getting up close and personal with the lads. They're still sweeping, Sergeant. Out of the way. What are you doing, baby? Stand still! Stand still! Stand still! How dare you! Move when I tell you to stand still! When a platoon sergeant tells you to stand still, you stand still immediately. You do not move about, you do not shimmer. You stand shining still! Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. I'm not sure to, where to start with this room, gentlemen. Well, should we start with something simple? I'm stood here looking at the world's amount of crap on the floor, which you idle pieces of garbage haven't even bothered to clean up this morning. Is this your bed space? Yes, Sergeant. Thank you. Turn round. What do you see? Polish on the right, Sergeant. On the right, and dubbing on the left. Decided we don't want to get dressed in the morning, is that it? How did you get to breakfast? With my boots on, Sergeant! And you decided to take your boots off because you didn't need them for the inspection? No, Sergeant! Look behind you at your window. What is that hanging off the window? Are you trying to commit suicide? Are you going to hang yourself off that, are you? Because no, you might as well, because you're about as much use as a chocolate fire guard where you are now! What is this? Mark, Sergeant. Why is it still on the floor? Why is it still on the floor? I didn't know it was down there, Sergeant. You didn't know it was down there? The whole mug is down there! You couldn't miss it! You must have just felt A blind man could see that! You can't because you're stupid! Whose is this? Whose is this? Yeah, it's, the it's a spare. It's a Thank section. God for that. Because if somebody was using this to clean their teeth, I would be very, very perturbed. Get it away. Name. Rosalind, Sergeant. 
Dirty boots, Rossiter. Bag of shite, Rossiter. Oh, look, we have a pretty drawing. Isn't that sweet? What's that? A pull cord, Sergeant. That is the metal end of the pull through. What colour is it? Rusted, Sergeant. It's not rusted, it's just dirty. I really like it when it's clean, because that means that you're clean. That's dirty, that means you're dirty. Yes, Sergeant. What's your name? Pittman, Sergeant. Pittman. Dirty. Is this the toothbrush you use, Pittman? Yes, Sergeant. Bit effeminate, but then that probably goes with you, Pittman. Something to say? No, Corporal! Something to say? No, uh, Corporal! So why are you breaking into tears? Is it because you're weak? No, Corporal! You look weak. <laughs> no, Corporal! Good. That's better. Bit of strength, Pittman. Good. It's the first thing we've seen that's good. You are, at the moment, the worst thing I have ever seen in my four years of recruit training at this depot. You are a shambles of shite! Carry on, call Ed. Son. After a disastrous barracks inspection, Corporal Nyokas is looking for answers. Never in the whole of my army career have I seen a section or a platoon so happy on a Sunday afternoon, so full of the joys of spring, working so hard to produce such an apologetic shambles in the morning. I I'm mystified. I have no clue. Somebody explain to me why it is such a cock-up. What went wrong? Lack of direction? Do I need to be here every minute, every hour of the day? No, Corporal. Pittman, outside. Everybody else, get in your lockers. To help concentrate their minds, one section get a stint in their lockers. A favourite punishment of their corporal. But after 15 minutes, some of the lads have had enough. It's out in the piss. In well out of all of this. Pittman's beginning to do my bloody head well, you know. What was he doing? Wasn't he making an effort? Because he's not working for the team, right? He's just performing. He said before, right, that he's only yeah, he's only after he's only after the publicity after the show, right? And that's all he did last night. He told a few of the lads a story about how the girls, yeah, how the girls at work said that if I cry when I'm getting shouted at, I'll get loads of publicity. There was all wrong with his kit. Look at his kit. Is it on the floor? No, it's not. He shot one thing on this floor and he started crying over it. The rest of us put 100% in this, 100%, more than that. Exactly Look at yesterday, how many times have we go back and forth? We've all stuck with this. It doesn't matter what we do, it's going to be like this, isn't it? But he's not working for the team, though, that's the thing. When Pittman returns to the barracks, Michael Honzik wants a word. Pittman, right, you need to start thinking less about the cameras, right? And more about the team. I wasn't thinking about the cameras today, boy. You were. So don't lecture you me. You were. Piss off. You were. Piss off. You were. Guys, because we all I don't right. want a lecture from you, you little 18-year-old brats. Right, I'm not giving you a lecture. Just listen. Listen, I'm not having a lecture. I'm not having a go at you, right? I already know what you said when I walked out the building this morning, Hansi. So there's no point crawling. Yeah, so thing. listen, no, I'm telling you to you Fair respect. I'm not, talk I'm not bothered about the cameras. If I was that bothered about the cameras, that wouldn't have happened this Pittman, morning. what did you say last night? 
You said the girls at your work said you'd get more publicity Don't back on. No, because you need... Corporal Nyokas is determined to get to the bottom of the problems in his section. You outside. Understand? Yes, Corporal! It's Pittman pulling his weight. Could he do better? He could do better, Corporal, but he's not doing awful, Corporal. Awful doesn't cut it. Is he pulling his weight? A simple yes or a no? Yes, 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 yes Corporal. Corporal. Once again, Wolf remains silent. Wolf is the only one that I trust implicitly not to lie to me. Wolf, yes or no? No, Corporal. I'll ask the section again. Is he pulling his weight? No, 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 no. Thank you. I've just asked the section if you're pulling your weight. Because I've been reliably informed by one of your section that you are not pulling your weight. Now, this morning's little breakdown, I thought was because of all the effort that you'd put in last night and it had all gone pear-shaped to rat shit. But it now appears that you didn't actually put in that much effort. So I've asked the rest of the section their opinion and they agree that you are not pulling your weight. However, everybody deserves a second chance. You understand? Yes, Corporal. Can't hear you. Yes, Corporal. Speak up. I don't want it, Corporal. Speak up. I don't want it, Corporal. Speak up. I don't want it, Corporal. You're getting it. I'm not asking you if you want a second chance. I'm telling you, you are getting a second chance. I don't want it. Hey! I don't want it. Come here. TV's your... Come here. Come here. No, Come here. Leave me alone. I'm Come here. here. Come here. Down like shit. Come here. Stand there. Look at me. Look at me. We're at that stage now where all recruits, including Private Pittman, are getting to their wits' end. Given that we've only done drill, cleaning, working on kit, learning how to put on a kit and everything else, there's very little soldiering in all that. I think it's just me getting tired. I need my own personal space as well, and I value that outside. And you don't really get that here. There were so many things I thought, oh, I'll bring this to the group and I'll bring that to the group. And so far, I've watched everybody else bring something that I've thought, I'm really not doing anything. And even when I'm, you know, I feel as if I'm giving 100, 100%, obviously I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's not up to their standards. Once they get out into the field, they'll start to feel more like soldiers and here for a purpose. At the moment, they can see no purpose in being here other than being shouted at. In the 50s, washing was often a case of face, feet and forks. Or in other words, a quick splash around the armpits and crotch. This afternoon, the lads are only allowed a quick body wash. But Corporal Murray thinks he's caught a few taking a sneaky shower. Why are you in the shower? What were you f***ing told? To wash, have a body wash and be outside for 16.40. What time did you get back? Holbrook. You three are placed on report, do you understand? Yes, yes. For disobeying a direct order, you will go in front of the company commander. Well, Hanley get two sections out there dressed in their overall denims. Yes, I told you not to waste water because the QM tells us that there's not enough water. And you just used, look there. Now, look. Do you see that water? Yes, Corporal. Look. That came out of the shower, because that is the pipe from the shower. And I will be back in 20 minutes, and that water better not be there. You better sweep it up, get on your knees, and get it done. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal. Corporal. Move! Get rid of that water. Scrape it up. Why are you scared? They get wet. Right, you see, he's down now, in the position. Down, down. Get your f***ing noses in that water. Get you and your f***ing binos down. Get your nose. Down. Do you know how much that could feed a whole company? Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal. I hate losing water. It could keep you alive. And look at the day as it's sunny. Now get up and get it cleaned. Go! 
Now the entire platoon is on parade, and it's going badly for everyone. You don't need that way! There he is! There's the right marker there! Fall in and over! Shut up! Shut up! I didn't say you could talk! Stand still! Stand still! Stand! Get shoulder to shoulder, push down the right. Push down to the right. Down to the right. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle. What are you do? Get in line. Stand still. Get in line. Get in line. Get in line with the man to your right. Get in line. Get in line. This looks like a wiggling snake. Where's your belt, boy? Where's your belt? Don't look as if I'm lying. Where is your belt? Must be in my locker, couple. Sergeant, excuse me for a moment. Corporal Nyokas is losing his rag. Get out my way. Get out my way. Do not embarrass me. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, Do not corporal. embarrass me. Get your belt and get outside. Yes, Corporal. You! From the right, number! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten, eight, forty. And the platoon's even having trouble counting. From the right number! Odd numbers, one piece forward. Even numbers, one piece back. March! Stay still. The corporals have conferred. They've decided to punish the entire platoon for the parade ground shambles. They'll have to clean every inch of the hallowed tarmac with their nail brushes. Pray, gentlemen, what we are going to do is we are going to sweep the parade square. You have 60 minutes to do it. Better. Well done, Webb. Well done. This we... is all mind over matter. Correct. We don't mind, and, and you, you don't, don't matter. matter. And you've still got a lot of cleaning to do tonight. <laughs> and it'll be late so at 10 o'clock. However, we have got some night lamps, if you wish to work later, which I'm sure some of you as well. Copeland, this is going, come on, nail brush. Come on, nail brush. We can do it. We can do better. Come on, nail brush. Come on, nail brush. Come on, nail brush. Stand up. Just pan! Just pan! One piece from the wall. As a group, we do not retreat. We attack. Stand by. 60 seconds. No! Attack! 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 Following their successful assault on the parade square, the corporals whip the lads into a frenzy. It looks like they could take on anything, armed with their nail brushes. Get back attack, and fall and get rid of the brushes. Attack, get rid of the brushes. Ten. Ten seconds. It's lunchtime, and the corporals are about to keep the promise they made at breakfast. They've got a special treat in store for the lads. Hey, 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 hey. 
One sec so you can get those chairs off the tables quickly. Because of the, the complaints or the observations on breakfast this morning, Cookman Murray and I are going to serve your lunch to you. You have earned it. What do you say? Thank you, Corporal. Gentlemen, you requested fruit. There is fruit in here. Your lunch is also in here. So what I want you to do now is clear the tables of everything except your spoon. When I say go, you shall get up on the table, on your knees, and you shall finish the whole pot. Go. Even at meal times, there's fierce competition with each section at a different table. It's a race to finish a huge pot of shepherd's pie mixed with bananas. Get in there. What turn. Get in there. The next person that I hear around this section laughing will be wearing this pot on the head for the remainder of the day. The position commander, stand up! Stand up! Do adjust and attack! Attack the fish! It must be finished! One section's winning! Look at the size of these fat asses! Come on! Get in there! Get in there! Gents, anyone got any complaints about the food? Not at all, sir. Not at all, sir! Right, get stuck in! Extra PT for the section that comes in second. What? Hey! Get your ass in gear! Come on! It's all gone, Cook. Yeah. Right, give me that dish. Get all this stuff off the table. Eat it. All the stuff. Give me that. Give me that. Two sections add gluttony to their list of military triumphs. Finish it. One section are well and truly stuffed. Two sections of the winners. One section's defeat is the final straw for Corporal Nyokas. Two sections. Do you feel good about yourselves? Yes, Corporal. One section. Do you feel good about yourselves? No, Corporal. Good. Then we're agreed on something. Get some juice. One section. You are off. You have upset one of my colleagues. And trust me, when you upset him, you upset me. You shall suffer. If this place isn't cleaned by 12.20 completely and we get any bad reports from the chef, stand by. Sick that was, wasn't it? <laughs> As his mates finish cleaning up the mess hall, Nicky Sandford storms back to his billet. Shepherd's pie with banana topping has left a nasty taste in his mouth. I don't have to put up with their shit, because I won't, you know what I mean? It's only a level that I'll go to. The thing is, though, we've had a really good day. We ain't done... It's been that wrong. We've been parading all day. We've, we ain't, have we, today? We've done nothing wrong. That was for nothing. He said to us earlier, could you do with some more food? And people just... He says, they say, be honest. And they said, yes, cool, but we would like some fruit. That's all we asked for was some extra fruit. That was it. What's the point in having it all those lot on our hands and knees like pigs with our heads in a bucket? Yeah. Yeah. Right, even now, I'm still crunching bits in my mouth. I'll tell you what. I had, to, I had to drink because I was barking. And I had to, like, take a, put a tiny bit in my mouth, take a drink and, like, swallow it like it was a tablet because I was going to throw it. <laughs> Honestly, I thought... I, thought, I, just, I, was gonna, I should have just yeah, done it, and I would not have cleared it up either. I would have just left that. What it is, right, all that's done was we thought we were getting closer to our individual corporals. Everyone thought they were doing well and we were bonding with the corporals and stuff, and we started having respect for them. All this is done is put all again, all of us once again against them. Like this morning, they come in and like we, we, we all put the effort in, and like at the end of it, he always digs a few out, open your windows, throws your stuff out the windows. Yeah, we, we can take that, but you know that was that was degrading, that was yeah. humiliation. You know that was ah oh, just. And I know they talk about like, stripping you down and building you up, it. but I don't see how that builds you up at all. It takes you down, but it doesn't put you back up there. Over in two section, the mood is very different. For them, lunch was yet another excuse to rub one section's nose in. I'd say that was a fine team performance. <laughs> I was in hysterics, man. I was like, after that, I just couldn't stop laughing. How can you not laugh when something like that's happening? Because that was pure we'll, hoggish. We've we'll got points for that. Mm. <sighs> Meanwhile, outside one section, Tom Wolfe decides to confront Corporal Niogas. Corporal Nyokas, if you can look me in the eye and say that wasn't a fast television, then I, I'll back down and agree with you totally. That, but that wasn't a fast television. Look at me, look at me. That was not a fast 
That All was right. the fastest television. There were crews there. He was in parading. The, the, the sergeant was parading around. Okay, it was a fast for television. No, it was not. Was banging around. Okay. No, it was not. And then I can right, now again. stop. Now, whether you consider it a farce or not is not your call. That is my call. And I'll try to it. Hundred! Where are you going? Stand at the end of there. Now, I'm not having a mutiny from Waterloo Platoon because they're not happy with an incident. Whatever the reason, all right? I think, I think Whatever... Stop. Whatever the reason, Corporal Murray and I have reasons for everything we do. Morale has reached an all-time low in one section. Jody Copeland has even exiled himself to his locker. I'm telling you, no more smart remarks, Trim. No more smart remarks. No more. No more. No more. Just say everything's fine, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Yes and no, isn't it? That's a lot, mate. Because he's not... What's the point of that? He's not a mate. He's not a mate at all. He's not doing a <laughs> favour, is he? He's just giving us shit. Lecture room now. Let's go. Sensing the mood, Corporal Nyokas gathers his troops for a chat. Let's say this at once, and once only. I would not ask you people to do anything that I have not done or I could not do. Do you understand? Yes, or no. There may be times when you need to be fed. And within three, four or five minutes of you being fed, you are charging forward into battle or fighting some battle somewhere, involved in some war. From that, you need to learn to eat quickly. There are occasions when you need to have an all-in. And when I say all-in, I mean everything because you're forgetting the era and the times that we're living in, aren't you? Yes, yes Corporal. There are hundreds and thousands of national servicemen that go through training. Believe it or not, you people have got it pretty easy in comparison to others. You have gone to your lowest, have you not? All yes, of you. Yes, yes, Corporal. You can't get lower than that. Anything else is an absolute bonus, is it not? Yes, Corporal. Anything else? Stand up. You're going to meet, make us eat like animals again, Corporal. Do I need to? No, no Corporal. No, Corporal. Do I need to? No, no, no Corporal. Corporal. Lesson learned. Don't eyeball me. You ain't that good. Right. You ain't that good, Sanford. <laughs> Stand up. The other day in our section, you told us to always be honest to you, Corporal. So when you asked us if we, if you thought we were missing anything from our diet, we were being honest with you, because you said you don't like thieves or lies. Right. So if we tell the truth, we then feel it kind of backfires on us. It hasn't backfired. You got plenty of fruit. You got plenty of food. The manner in which it was served was somewhat non-conformist. Anything else? Okay. Everybody out, with the exception of Sanford. Sanford, come and sit in the front. National Service basic training. All right? People must have told you stories before you came in. If they didn't tell me how to eat like an animal, call. People must have told you stories before you came in. Let me tell you a story that happened to me. A trench was dug. I was in the trench. Boards were put over the top of it. And I mean only a six-foot trench. Boards were put over the top of it. And it was used as a latrine by all the other members of the section. And they were ordered to use it as a latrine. But I'm still here. That doesn't mean I was abused, so I will abuse everybody. I'm telling you the way it is. Things happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Today is a shitty day. Was yesterday a shitty day? No, Corporal. Was the day before a shitty day? No, no Corporal. I can't even remember the day before. All right, tomorrow might be a nice day. No, I just thought we had a really good day today, and like, it was all, like, everything was going well, and then like that just Get your foot still. degrading. Was it degrading? Degrading, Corporal, yeah. Can you get any lower than that? No, Corporal. Cool. Everything else is up mill, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Come and sit down at me again, Corporal. If it happens again, it happens again. If it doesn't, it doesn't. 
All right. Snap out of it. Go over to the ablutions. You've got about three minutes on your own. Within the first few days of their training, national servicemen were usually interviewed to help the army spot potential officer material. Next! Don't just mince in. Get back out and come back in again. You've just been doing drill, haven't you? Get back out. Don't tick-tock. Your right arm moves to your left leg. You've just been doing drill this morning. March in and halt. Meet the platoon commander, Richard Owen. Well, I'll be speaking to Colton Murray about you when you get out. Drill is pathetic. Move over here. I can see you. It's better. Right, what's your name? Sanford. March over here. You've left. Move over here. I can't see you. Closer. Closer. Stand over here. In front of the telephone. You're like a startled rabbit. What's your name? William. Name? I Private Wolf, sir. Private Pin, sir. Hunzik, sir. Dodd. Oh, uh, sir. Dog, uh, Corbett, uh, sir. Where are you from? Uh, Gillingham in Kent. Willingham from Gillingham, eh? Yeah, that's right. What did you do before you joined the army? I'm in security, sir. I have my own shop, sir. What type of shop? A needle workshop, sir. Previous job was a bouncer and in various nightclubs. A bouncer? Yes. Uh, so you're a bit of a hard man, then? No, sir. OK, number? 23819224, sir. Slow down. 23819216, sir. Slow down. Two. Three, eight, one, nine, two, one, four, sir. Three, two, eight, one, nine, two, three, six, sir. Thanks, sir. Two, three, eight, one, Stop playing with yourself. Try again. Three, two, eight, one, nine, two, three, six. No. Nine, four, two, one. I don't think so. Nine, four, two, one, sir. I still don't think so. Number? Two, three, one. In the 1950s, a public school education, good family connections and the right accent were minimum qualifications for potential officers. Qualities that seem to be in short supply with today's lads. What did your father do for a living? And a taxi driver, sir. He's a fruit and vegetable merchant. Police officer, sir. Has he been in the army? Uh, in the Navy, sir. Navy? What did your father do? Um, he eats pies, sir. He eats pies? Yes, sir. Did you serve in the army? No, sir. Yes, sir. What regiment? The, the RCT, or the RLC now, sir. What did your father do? He's in the army 26 years, sir. Which regiment? ACC, then RLC. At last, some potential officer material. What rank was he? Colonel, sir. With the atmosphere in the billets getting steamier by the second, the corporals decide to offer the lads some light relief and organise a football match. It's a friendly between the two sections, but with tensions running high, the lads will seize any opportunity to score points over their rivals. one section, they think it's all over. It is now. Play it up, bluesy boy. At the end of a long and emotional day, there's a chance to relax in the naffy. Stand by. <laughs> You're facing me. <laughs> You're looking at me like a seductive blonde. <laughs> it's a place to swap jokes, flirt with the naffy girls, <laughs> and get a master class in rolling the perfect cigarette. Yeah, a bit too much in there. A lick. A twist. There you go. Well, we can have another yeah, glass of lemonade. A little bit tighter, otherwise we'll be back here for a while. Not too much spit. It's also a chance for the corporals to socialise with the lads and show them that they are human after all. 
And as the recruits prepare to do it all again tomorrow, even Nicky Sanford seems to have forgotten the horrors of lunch. I love the way he talks. He knows no different. There, there is no grey area about him. He says what he means. He means what he says. Um, I've yet to see him box, but apparently he's quite a tasty boxer. Me and you. So tasty, in fact, Sanford's challenged Corporal Murray to go a few rounds with him. Good night. Good night. <laughs> so hopefully now it don't happen, you know, like. That's all I want to be in down in the gym and Corporal Murray comes in for a few rounds. Because <laughs> that would be it for me. I mean, I want to get out of here alive. <laughs> How'd you get? Morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Corporal. Loader. Good morning, Corporal. Loader. Morning, Corporal. Right, get your washing and shaving kit. It's get day seven of basic training, and the 30 lads are settling into military okay, life. Men, get over there. My big boys! Today, Corporal Murray is doing the morning kit inspection. Stop moving your head, because one of these days you're going to turn that head and what you're going to find is my fist. One section, otherwise known as shower of shit, have failed every inspection so far. Did you clean this? No, Corporal. You didn't? No, Corporal. Watch. That is disgusting. Yes, Corporal. You can catch diseases if you don't clean things like this. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Louder! Yes, Corporal! Disgusting. It causes diseases, gentlemen. Right, one section, look in this way. However, it's not been too bad. Quite good. But you've got to pay attention to the detail, because the platoon sergeant will rip that apart. Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal! So well done this morning. Good effort. However, let's get into the little things. Like the razors. Because that is gunge, that is hygiene. And if you're not hygienic, you can't what? Fight, The lads are forming up outside their billets. It's a chance for an intimate moment between Corporal Nyokis and his boys. What is that on your face? There's two sections you've got something they want to confess. <laughs> are you the duty boy? <laughs> Was it your turn today? <laughs> no, Corporal. Come on, boys, on my face. <laughs> Shut up. Is that what you were shouting? Yeah, that was it, Corporal. Call me naughty whilst you spank me. <laughs> I was saying, who's the daddy, Corporal? Sorry? I was shouting, who's the daddy? <laughs> yeah. I bet they're all shouting, you, baby, you, baby. <laughs> right, are we all here? Yes, yes Corporal. No, Corporal. Corporal. Who's missing? I lost a man. We haven't lost a man. Wotton. He's not a man. Where's Cook? What's he Right, on the count of three, I want you all to <laughs> scream out, Private Cook, where are you? One, two, three. Private Cook, where are you? Left wheel! Now that Private Cook has turned up, there's yet another drill lesson for Waterloo Platoon. But this time, it looks like one lad is off to Sergeant Sullivan's job. Did you decide you were going to ignore my instructions for him to march a squad on, did you? No. Stop moving! Don't move! Stand perfectly still! Now, did you call out the word of command, halt, because you decided to take over the squad. 
Yes, Sergeant. You did? Excellent. Come out here. No, get back! March out and halt. March out and halt. Round here, march out and halt. Turn and face the squad. Yes, that's the group of people all in green, not the building. You are so confident that you can just take command of this platoon after I've given an instruction to somebody, aren't you? Aren't you? No, sir. Oh, yes, you are, because you decided to give the word of command halt, because you obviously decided he's not going to give it right, so I'll just do it. <coughs> Because I don't want to listen to him, I just want to do my own thing. Well, you've got a platoon of men now. Go drill them! Come on, drill them! They're waiting Smart. for your word of command. Smart! Squad, it's in! Shut! Right, come on. They're waiting for you. What do you want them to do? March. Yeah, Sergeant. you want them to march, Corporal Sergeant. <laughs> now, you have worked with me for five days. Each day I've come out wearing this uniform with a badge of rank on both sides which has three stripes on it. Each day I have repeatedly said that I am sergeant. Each day you have repeatedly said corporal. I know your eyesight isn't that bad, otherwise you'd be wearing glasses like the rest of us specky pillocks. <laughs> so why is it that you cannot recognise three stripes, especially when they're stood right next to you? Quick! March! That's right, that's I'm starting to feel more and more like a real, real soldier, if I can, if I can say such, um, even though I'm not. Um, but it is starting to feel, feel like I am becoming more disciplined. It's fatigues again. Menial jobs that the two and a half million blokes who did national service remember only too well. Today's tasks include gardening with spoons, along with ritual Keep humiliation. Put your head in the bucket. Carry on. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Don't you drop a blade of grass. I can see I'm a f***ing sniper. One section are cleaning the ablutions. That's washrooms in civvy speak. Just got to get on with it, really. So otherwise, you know what I mean, if we, we got the amp of it, it'd only take longer and feel harder, so it's better that we just relax. It's better than any other thing that they give us to do. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't ever do the cleaning at home. Never, ever. But when I go home, my kelpin's out of a job. <laughs> so, so what are you doing, boy? I'm looking for a coat room that's got a black sack. Caught roll. Why are you running away? I ain't running away. You was running away. I was not running away. You was going to go over, wasn't you? <laughs> wasn't you? No, Because you don't like it here, do you? I love it here, Corporal. Well, go and get some work, don't you? I'm looking for black... Um, Stop running, man. You're wasting time. See, where's Bedbox? Bedbox! And then, uh, he's got to go in here. Get back in the next morning, tie it all up so they can't see you've left. Hey. Can't aren't we, Stan? We're not really getting anything. We're going to escape one night, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. We're going to go down the Great town. escape. I'll tell you what, Stan. While you're yeah, digging there, just dig us a tunnel out. <laughs> just start a tunnel yeah, there. We want to get in and this. every day we'll come out with a shovel and say, oh, we just cleaned up, can't we? You're going to sell it, are you? Yeah, we'll Do you know what I would have done? The, the lads are preparing their gear for a camouflage <laughs> exercise. <laughs> If you do it like that, you don't have to do any sewing. Um, yeah, Sanford. Inside that, right? Sanford, where you come from, does everybody talk like you? Corporal, cool, I don't see what's wrong with the way I talk, Corporal. Cool. Nothing, mate. Nothing. Nothing, I don't nah, see nah, it, I don't know nah. any different. <laughs> nah. Nah. Do they all talk like you? Nah. No. <laughs> no. Are they all wide boys? What's wide boys, Corporal? Cool, cool? Wide boys. Cool. Yeah, like thieves and things. If you're always, around. always dealing. Yeah, dodgy, of course, dodgy it? dealers. Yeah. Dodgy, yeah. Dodgy characters making them, you know, little bit here, wheeling and dealing, dodgy Cuddle dealing, clear, bit of this, bit of that. Yeah. Make a pound on the side. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do to make a pound note, Paul. Do what? Whatever you can do to make a pound note. <laughs> I do like him. He's a funny boy. Um, I've got to be very careful to keep that instructor recruit relationship with him. But it's very difficult because he, he's a very likable bloke. Um, 
and the way he talks is so funny. He's cheery, bubbly, um, and I, I think he'll be another one that's pulling the section together. Right, gentlemen, where we're going to go on is personal camouflage. Why do we need to conceal ourselves for the enemy? Ah, don't shout out, just put your hand up. Hot binos. Otherwise they kill us, Corporal. Yeah, so that you don't become an easy target. <laughs> Corporal Murray has brought along three male models to demonstrate good, bad and ugly camouflage technique. Now, this is too much. Does everybody understand that? Yes, yes. Far too much. Hitler died a few years ago, yeah? What he's done here is he's broke up the outline of his face. Do you understand? It's not too much, and it's not too little, it's just right. Too little, do it properly. Don't draw circles, whole brick, or right knob in his forehead. Come on in, get away! Get away! Get out of there! Now for a game of hide and seek, army style. One section go into hiding. Go! Get a move on! Two section are the seekers. First to be found is 20-year-old student James Willingham. He doesn't get off lightly. Samford, stop laughing like a girl. Well, I can't run as it is. Right there. Get him from the back. Right, what I want you to do now, I want you to run up to that and run back to me. It's been good it's been bad. Unfortunately, we've, we've lost a member of the team. But apart from that, the actual activities we've done today have been really good. I've been doing camouflage and like signals from out and about. Like, you wouldn't be able to see Smiley next to me, but he is actually next to me, but he's in camouflage gear. But yeah. So. <laughs> I was always good at hide and seek anyway. So it was all right. And we won. Yeah, we you found. Won. We pulled back a couple of points with 14 men. I mean, it ain't bad, is it? Conceding I've never uh, done any camouflage in my life or any army training. I wasn't the first to get caught. I was second. <laughs> One section have spent hours cleaning their billet. Enter Corporal Niokis. What do you do when I come in the room? What? What do you do? Stand to attention, Corporal. So why are your people standing to attention when I walk in? Dad, what's in there? Rubbish, Corporal. Why is cleaning equipment out? What are they on your feet? Didn't I just say ammunition boots? We thought we'd have them on our bed for inspection, Corporal. Right, and then as soon as I finish the inspection, quarter past eight, his company sergeant major's muster parade. Yes, Corporal. So, w where are you going to fight? Stand still! We should have put them on this morning, Corporal, instead of these boots, Corporal. Too late. I am going to be made to look a complete idiot. Get outside. Take your boots with you. Get outside! Get outside now! Get out! Get out! Get out! Later today, Waterloo Platoon will meet the most feared NCO of all, the company Sergeant Major. Before then, Corporal Nyokis intends to teach his section a lesson.
You be one of with me. Go ahead. Do not test me. You will start getting up earlier. You will start to work. No more joviality. No more laughing and joking. You are going to turn into soldiers, whether you want to or not. You are now here. There is no way out. What is there? No way out, Corporal. But Corporal Nyokas is wrong. For one of the lads, there is a way out. Smiler. Where's Smiler? Nicky Sanford, nicknamed Smiler, is missing. They haven't seen him. Stand perfectly still. Do not move. Do not flinch. Where's Sanford? Where is he? Sanford! 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 Sanford. Smart on. I'm going over the fence now. I'm going straight in there. I reckon he's gone into the woods to sit and contemplate. Can you get up for that? Security. Yeah, see me. Sanford! <laughs> Have you ever seen a young lad dressed like me? Um, you have? Yes. Where, whereabouts? Um, he ran past here, ran the full length of there, because I was intrigued by his appearance. What time was that? Eight o'clock, approximately. OK, thanks very much indeed. We don't know at the moment what's happened. You know, we're a bit worried about him. I mean, he's, he's, you think his pumps have gone, but, but he's still got his photos here, so we're not sure yet what's really happened. He's got no money. He's dressed in 1950s army gear. Well, where would you go? You know, no money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, the most he could manage it was a reverse charges phone call. So at that extent, he'd still, he'd still be somewhere around about here. Nobody found him? Don't know. Does he not been told anything? Who's that? Sanford. Oh, he's a yeah. in. Best guys around. Sanford was probably our fittest yeah. member. You know, he's, he's a fitness instructor. Um, which is probably the least person I would have thought who was going to go, get up and do a runner. But looking at it on the other side, he's probably the, the one who's got the best chance of actually getting away. Hopefully he will come back. Hopefully yeah. he's just gone. And he's, he's he'll get he out there and he'll realise on his own or something. Then he'll come back. Because he's, he's tough enough for this. He's, yeah. he's tough enough for this. You know, he's just he's going to be a massive loss if, if we don't find him basically. An hour later, Corporal Nyokis returns to the barracks without Sanford. The NCOs need to establish whether any of the other lads helped him get away. Right, you two, sit down. I couldn't have chosen two finer people to have him the first time. I'm dealing with a real situation. I want to know what you know about Sanford. Has anybody, jokingly or otherwise, talked about going over the fence? No, not at all. Yes, Corporal. Right. In what manner was it said? How was it said? What was In the conversation? a joke, we were talking about the Great Escape and stuff like that. Right. And we were cleaning the, uh, the back of was the evolution yesterday. Yeah. We were talking about going over, but it was just a joke. Everyone knew it was just... Was Sanford around when you were talking? He might have been. Did you elaborate on a plan of escape? 
Or the, the only thing we spoke about was getting the horse out of the gym and digging underneath the fence. Right. That's a joke. When he was writing these letters, I tried to talk to him and he, he was having none of it. He doesn't want to, didn't want to know last night at all. He, so went, he went to bed quiet yeah. for the first time ever. We tried to perk him up. Thank you. Right. You're quite obviously all concerned about Stanford. He, um, as you know, he did a runner this morning, all right? He's been caught. It is now being decided whether or not he comes back here and is disciplined here, OK? So as soon as I know, I will let you people know. Pass that to the rest of the section platoon, will you? Uh, he got to Waterloo. I thought that was pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've got to hand it to him for trying hard to get out. I know he's not supposed to, but... He did do a good job of that. I find it absolutely amazing that he's, he's gone over the fence, actually over a barbed wire fence and I think razor wire at the bottom, as opposed to going out the main gate. I think he's, he's actually living the 1950s National Service, has decided it's time to get out and has, has jumped the fence, gone over the wall, 1950s style, which I find absolutely incredible and wonder about his state of mind. Now it's time for something the chubby lads have all been dreading. Left, right, left, right, left. Right, this afternoon, legs. Assault course against the clock. This is when it's going to count for points for your section against the other section. Remember what I said about working as a team? The clock stops when the last man completes the last obstacle. Go! Over and under. Next man up. in there, hasn't it? Yes. That was impressive. Some good teamwork. It's starting to happen. In under a week, it's really starting to come together. However, there was one section on cumulative time that was marginally faster than the other section. A matter of seconds. And the winning section on the time to salt course is one section. Yes! Well done, lads. Private Sandford has been located. Gentlemen, Sandford is not coming back. Don't want to hear it. <clears throat> OK? It's a done issue. Yes. I know it pisses you off, it pisses me off. I want 110% from this section. We are holding it together with 13 people. Right. Let's work hard, gentlemen. Let's get everything right from now on, OK? Nicky was, was like, strong, fit, but he might have lacked it a bit up here. Um, sticking it out as a team would probably have been better than running away from it. He made the whole thing look easy, like getting out of here as well, which just was the down on things, cos like, I'm struggling here as well, like, not with discipline and that, just missing family. He missed his mum and missus, like, big time, just like I did my kid and missus. And, uh, He's just made. He's just showing me how easy it would be to do what he's done. There's been times when I've been down and people have mucked in, they've talked to me and stuff, and it's sorted my head out. But I think uh, I think he lacked a bit there. He's a really good lad and stuff, but I think he should have stayed because he could have done it if he'd had that tiny bit more will. A soldier isn't a soldier without a gun. Each lad is issued with a number four Mark I Lee Enfield rifle. Check, check. 
Essentials, ain't it? Essential kit for a trained killer. Right! Time! One, two, three, one! Good! Now keep it like that. Keep these elbows parallel. You will get tired. Now you know why we've been building up your muscles. Because this is what it's for. But before they can fire them, they must learn to drill with them. Spud! Tag! You are a piece of shite. You're a waste of rations. These people, all of them, even the worst man in this platoon, are working harder than you. The next time I see you with a smile on your face or doing something that you think is clever, I'll wrap that rifle round your skull. Sergeant. Eyes! Private Poulter has asked Corporal Nyokis for a confidential chat. I know you've got a couple of kids yep. or something, and I just want to know from your experience. Uh, I've got a ten and a half month baby, and I want to know whether you think you'll forget me. No. While I'm here. The easy answer is no. He won't forget you. I understand your concerns, all right? But do not rip yourself up at the fact that you You've deserted your family, because you haven't, all right? What's the baby's name? Lewis. Right, I, I promise you, this will have no effect whatsoever on Lewis, because you can make it all up to them when you get back. It's, it's more at night, though, because during the day, we don't get much time to think about it, because we're always busy with other stuff. But it's just at night time. I mean, do, you, do you want us to start screaming at, like, 3 in the morning? No, no, no that's what he, he slept through the night, so... Yeah, all right, that's okay. It's just the way it is. All right? Yeah, thank you. Go on. Yeah, throw it. Go play the piano. For a boy to ask a question like, my son's ten and a half months old, do you think he'll forget me? That's quite touching, really. And, of course, he doesn't know the answer because he's never been away from his family before. So I, I will keep a close eye on him and um, make sure that he's all right. Gentlemen? Yeah. Can we have your attention? Yeah. Hey. Right. It's been up and down, in and out. You've had bollockings, you've had praising, you've had everything else. Court Murray and I have brought you a crate per section to drink and enjoy. All right, that doesn't mean it's getting any easier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And one section's got the bottle over now. All together. All together. All together. Yeah. Have like an endurance. It's a hard work. And one in there, big man. And one week. And to Cork and Murray. Happy Scottish Murray. Happy Scotsman. <laughs> What the bloody hell's going on in here? Sit up, all of you. Who authorised this? You two, outside. Get out! <laughs> Get out! Shut up! Wipe your smart of your faces, gentlemen. You'll be joining them. <laughs> Get out, son. You! Down! Next time I hear a word from you, Smart ass, and I'll have you. <laughs> right, listen in, gents. I was in front of the country start making this morning. He was reaming me and you arsehole because of you two. Because your platoon is in shit order. Because of the lack of work you two have done. I get it in the next, so do you. And then you go and buy them beer. They're supposed to be getting their shit ready. Instead, they're sitting in there getting pissed. What do you think you two are on? Do you want to keep those? What are you looking at? <laughs> not a full one, not one with actually stuff in it. <laughs> It's Jubilee Sunday, and the recruits attend a special church service. Morning, morning, everybody. Morning. That's not right, is it, Harley? Get these badges back and be proud. Show the badge. Sit down everywhere. Hey, 
Morning, relax. Uh, do you want to push your chairs back a bit? You're a bit squashed. OK. You know the formula because you were here last week and you know I'm not going to shout at you, but this is our moment to think of other things. And you said last week how much you were missing families, children, mothers, fathers, girlfriends. This prayer is for our home and families and we remember them. Oh, Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, did share with Joseph and Mary the life of an earthly home, bless, we pray, you our homes and all those whom we love. Amen. 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 Sit down. Now the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep all your hearts and minds and those whom you love, in love and peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Amen. It's Letters Day today, but I don't know whether I'll get any, because I did say to my mum, don't send me any letters. Well, no, I don't, don't ask me why I did it, but it's just when, first of all, when she said, do you want me to, I thought, no, no, I don't want you sending me letters. But now, I really, really want her to send me letters, just so I can sit there and just look at her handwriting. Finally, the long-awaited letters arrive. Hey, Liz. Thank you, Corporal. Give that to Daly. <laughs> the recruits have been away 11 days without a word from their loved ones. For private bait, the wait has been agonising. You sad man. Private Copeland! Corporal. He's up that mail. Oh, I thought he's got another pile. Everyone hates me. Private Dodd! Hey! Sorry, Corporal. <laughs> Someone loves you. Mum's writing. Private Faulkner! Yes, Corporal. Private Honzik! Yes! Private <laughs> Wolf! Yeah. That's it, gentlemen. Okay. Happy? Yes, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Right, well, well, um, tonight, you know, <laughs> you've got boxing. All right, and I've staked a fiver with a platoon sergeant on who's going to win. Is that what? Tonight? Tonight. Yes, tomorrow. tonight. <laughs> Pittman has no letters and hits an all-time low. But he's not the only one shedding a few tears. A deluge of posts seems to have had a profound effect on private bait. I know I am as well. And look how much they miss you. Look how much you've got there, do you know what I mean? I know. Enough people must be missing you for you to get that much. I haven't even finished reading it yet. Exactly. Have a read of it. Just, put, just do you know what I mean? It's good. I'm not going to open mine just yet, because I know, I know the stuff my mum writes. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't feel very thick. <laughs> Jimmy, clean your hands your ears. <laughs> I was hoping to get a Mars bar in one of mine. Look my mum's at me, look. <laughs> Keep smiling, you can do it. It's true, it's very weird, so it's making me feel upset because we've done all this stuff, we haven't been able to tell them about it. Hello. It says, I wonder if you've got any uh, I wonder if you've got any old money. For Bourbons. Whereas, <laughs> whereas you wondered if this might be a problem, as it's easy to work out whether, you've, whether you know your 12 times table. <laughs> Never a strong point with you. <laughs> I got a letter off my mum, uh, a letter off one of my best mates, uh, a postcard off my mum showing me the colour she's painting the kitchen because she's pretty mental with her decoration plants. And this little essay is off my girlfriend, so I'm mega happy. What's she put on that other one behind it? 
is when I censored earlier. Did he censored it out? <laughs> yeah. The silly, the, what he's probably done is written it out and sort of censored out anything he's not meant to write. Dear Will, bollocks, nostrils, <laughs> pints of lager leg. <laughs> Lubrication. I will write again soon. Oh my god. <laughs> no, look, you read it there. He's put, Dear Will's bollock, bollocks, nostrils, pints of lager leg. Lubrication, packet of sausages injury. I will write again soon when it's not on the He's nutter. Much love, Gramps. <laughs> Um, your mum's got a cold, but she, maybe she's suffering from withdrawal because she's missing her favourite 23 year old son. This is my girlfriend, so Oh. It just feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, and I know she's alright now. Uh, I know there's people looking after her, I know, I know my little boy's alright because he was, he was ill before coming. Like, not badly, just like, like conjunctivitis, but like, in the letter it says that he's alright now and everything. It's just like proper peace of mind getting that letter. She hasn't wrote much, but just to know that she's there and it's good. And I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm going to hide in my locker. Someone lock me in for a bit. I'll uh, be in here with Mr. Bangy. <laughs> the recruits are learning essential skills to prepare them for the field of combat. The exercises may be fun, but they're physically gruelling. The physical training instructors have just four weeks to turn a bunch of civilian softies into lean, mean fighting machines. I think compared to national service, probably standards today are lower in young people. Um, they're not as active as teenagers. Sport at school's not as much encouraged as it used to be. Um, pastimes and hobbies are less physical than they used to be. Kicking a ball around is not as popular as it was 45 years ago. So I think the raw material today is perhaps a bit softer than they were in 1955. <laughs> You've got people there who can do 100 press-ups and no problem at all. And you've got others who struggle to do five or six. So it's a real difference. This really is sort of a complete spread across society. The physical side of basic training has been particularly challenging for Chris Hampson. Hampson tried reasonably hard on most of the runs and was prepared to, to give it a go, but I beyond sort of the level that he's quite a, a big chap, he is carrying a lot of weight on the runs, there is a real confidence issue there and mm -hmm. having the confidence himself to know, well actually yes I can run out to there and I can run back, okay I've got to do it in my own time. His first cross country run proved so tough he considered leaving Lad's army. Slow the breathing down. Out. Good man. And out. Good man. Look at me. All right. Good man. Walk in, take your time. Take your time. Put your foot on your, put your hands on your legs. Where people like Hanson will benefit in the next month is the support of his colleagues. And this is one of the very special things about this sort of physical fitness and this sort of environment. Something I believe in quite strongly, that the power of the team, what he'll get that he wouldn't get in Civvy Street in a gym on his own is he'll get support of his fellows that'll say, come on, pull your finger out, we're with you, you can do it. Good, use the legs, straighten the legs, straighten the legs. And push up, push up with the hands. Good, excellent, that's the way to do it, no problems. But despite encouragement from his teammates, Hampson's lack of fitness continues to dog him. He thinks he's letting his section down. Well, a few of the guys have come up to me, right or wrong, just relax. This is a Chris and Joe moment, you understand? And told me, and rightly so, that you're a bit concerned about you know pulling your weight and all the rest of it, and you're thinking of leaving. You are not letting these people down one iota, any way, shape, or form. In fact, I am more proud of you than 
anybody in here. You came on leaps and bounds, your self-confidence has went up. It's went down today, and it was down slightly yesterday. Am I right? Yeah. I can feel that. I'm trained to feel these things. And I think you know in your own mind that you 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 might not feel that you've contributed, but I know. I, I know, and I, I don't want to let you down. Don't worry about me. I, 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 I am here to get used 15 through. Right, and I know you wouldn't let me down unless there was something seriously up. Tell me who you feel. But I feel like I'm, I'm wasting everyone's time, I'm especially wasting your time. I'm wasting my own time. It's like yesterday, on the assault course, I slowed everyone down because they had to help me. Oh, a lot of the obstacles. And the last man, up you come. Nice and easy. Just like jumping over a puddle, mate. Step across it, step. Chris, take a deep breath and take that step, mate. I didn't try 100% everything. And that's why one section beat us. Take your time, man. Sit down, that's good. Take your time. Land on the pea gravel down here. Two footed landing. Nice and easy. Well done, round of applause, bit of courage there. And when I got back, I didn't do as much work as I could have done. I just went to bed, and I can feel it starting to slip away from me. What are you saying? Are you saying that you want to leave? Because that's the bottom line. Do you want some time to think about it? Yeah, please. After his chat with Corporal Murray, Private Hampson goes away to ponder his future. He's a good lad and I, I'd be sorry to see him go because he would make it at the end, not a problem. But that's his decision now and nobody else can change it. And I personally think he's going to go. Private Adebayo isn't having a good day either. He's gone to see the medic because he's got problems with his waterworks. Get rid of that. OK, there's nothing wrong with the URI and the tests that I've just done um, show that it's clear. The reason why you're probably going as quickly and as much as you are is probably nerves. If you get any more problems, any more burning or anything, come back and see me straight away. The army isn't going to let Private Hampson go without a fight. It's doing all it can to bolster his morale. Right. Face the platoon, and all I want you to do is an order arms. Don't call out the time, just do the order arms. Order. Abs. Wham. Top three. Wham. Top three. Wham. Spawn. That's all there is to it. Now, all you numpties who think, oh, we're damn good. Private Hampson here thinks he's poor at foot drill, but he can do that. We've obviously found your forte in life. The household division are waiting for you, Private yes, Hampson. Sir. Can you just see yourself in a bearskin outside Buckingham Palace? And I don't mean nude. <laughs> After a big, big bearskin, son. It would certainly have to be a huge bearskin, Private Hampson, and a rather large <laughs> red tunic. But it would work, because you can do this. All we've got to do is get you a shiny bayonet. Later in the day, Two sections still have a full complement of 15 men. <laughs> Private Hampson appears to be sticking it out. My mum will think I've lost the block doing bed blocks in the morning. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, mum. Shit, here we got a pot of guys. I can't get my duvet into a nice square shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cardboard to cut out and make it sticker? <laughs> what colour should we do the walls, darling? Green. <laughs> Green blanco. <laughs> blanco. blanco. Cracking Cracking number three. three. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the army was invented by a really vain woman. Who's like, oh, I want it pink today. <laughs> I'll it's stay back to green tomorrow. <laughs> and then I want it purple just to be annoying with my 17 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Pick 
them arms up, come on. Stomachs in, chests out, heads up. The recruits have finally reached the stage they've been waiting for. They get to fire their Enfield rifles for the first time. Most of us run around in the, in the woods near where we live, um, pretending we've got guns in our hands, fighting with actually uh, you know, air, so, and pretending uh, twigs are guns. So I think to actually get hold of a, a real rifle and, and be able to be actually able to fire them is a real buzz for most people. The beauty of the Enfield bolt action rifle is that unlike virtually every other bolt action rifle in the world, you do not have to take your eye off the target. The beauty of this system is that once you've loaded the first round, you take your sight on the target, chin resting against the woodwork, not too close, it'll kick you in the face. Thumb and forefinger only, lift up, pull back. You never ever need to take your eye off the target at all. Anybody not understand that? No problem. Good. And that's what I expect to see you do. Pro and support the possession and take control of the rifles with a charge of five rounds. No! Safe to catch on. Watch out. We've had the guns. It's a bit teasing having an empty gun that don't really work. And you sort of see all the lads looking at it when you're sitting down in your beds. And now is the, the time where we all get to sort of do the thing every bloke wants to do and go and shoot something. To be honest, that I, I was shot at myself. I was uh, I was nervous, but excited before I went up to shoot. It's the first time I've ever fired a gun of any sort before, and I was a bit shaky. Um, but now that I've done it, I'd like another turn. I want to go again. It was really good. I was a bit panicky at first. My first shot was a total air shot. I had my eyes closed. I was, was head turned away. But after after that, after after I, after I didn't knock myself out, I was I was happy. And then my eyes opened a bit. And by the end couple, I was I was top aiming. I was aiming for the German fella's head. Really enjoyed that. Um, never fired out like that. Back from their successful exercise on the rifle range, two section realise that they're one man down. Until he said daily, Yes. Um, two sections worried about the whereabouts of Chris Hampson. Private Hampson. Are we missing a man? We are missing Private Hampson. When did anybody notice that he had disappeared? He went to medic this morning, Corporal. Oh. Yes, you're allowed to two sections. I'm sorry. That Oh, listen, no. listen, Where? listen. I'm sorry that this is the second letter you will have to read. I have given up, lads. I have tried my hardest at everything that was put in front of me, and I know that oh. it was not enough. As you all know, I didn't come on to be on television, and I didn't come on for the money. I came on to prove something to myself, something which I have still yet to prove. You will succeed where I have failed. You are all, everyone, stronger than me, and more importantly, Fuck you are strong as a section, as shown by how we worked last night. I've got to know you all better in a week than some people I've known in a lifetime. I would be honoured to call any one of you my friends. I'm sorry for letting you all down. 23819211, private answer. Hand over to my place. This one's Andy addressed Penny. to Corporal Murray. This is what you do. You're so hard, all right, that you cannot What's achieve it. Remember what I said to you this morning? It's easy to walk away. It takes a man to stick it. Well, this all oh, get in? Let's oh, oh, all get oh, in now. Oh. With all due respect, Chris was a man. He's a man. I, I don't doubt that. I mean, I don't know the chat, but what I'm saying to you is, yeah, I don't want to see any of these from any of you. Couple, can we have that left back? Please? You won't have any of right, You can back. have it back afterwards, yes. I don't think anyone's angry with him for giving up. It's, it's, people are more worried about how he's feeling himself, you know, because we knew that he was struggling and he was having problems sort of dealing with things. And, I mean, he had talked to a few of us about it and we tried to reassure him, but obviously he's made his mind up. But just seems a shame, you know, everyone's a bit worried he didn't really let much on yesterday that this was what he was thinking of doing. So it was a bit of a shock to come back and find that out. I mean, you said a couple of days ago he was having problems, weren't he, Jack? We've talked him round into staying. We're a team of 15, or we were a team of 15. And we come back to find a letter and one of our boys is gone. So we're obviously failing as a team to make everyone feel comfortable. 
and I mean, everyone's saying he's a good. I mean, he's a he's a crank guy. He was a crank guy, but I, I wouldn't have gone out with that. I'm just disappointed. Like, Come in as 15, we should have been going out. It's, it was 15. Gutted that he's gone. Absolutely gutted. I'd started. I'd told him a lot of things about me. What I haven't told my best mates. And I mean. The guy's got a heart of gold and shoulders that you could bloody put a mountain on, you know, the guy's just... It's just a shame he's gone. Today's been a bit of a funny day because, obviously, with Chris going, we knew it was sort of coming, but we sorted it out yesterday. Every single lad in here gelled together with him and sorted him out, so we didn't expect it. It's a member of the team, you know. If he was physically unfit, he was stronger in tons of other departments, so it's a shame for him to have come this far as well. I've seriously considered uh, finishing my time on Lad's Army, basically because I feel half the section working and the other half sitting in the naffy having a smoke and a drink and cups of tea and eating when they should be doing the, their work. We've been here, we've all learned how to do it, yet in the mornings when we get up, the same people are standing there, sucking their thumb, asking for other people to help them do their kit. Concerned that Wolf may leave, Honzik enlists the help of Corporal Murray. Honzik, come here. Would it be possible for you to give our section a bit of motivation, Corporal? I'm just about to do that. Because at the moment they're feeling a bit low, and with the rumours about Wolf, I think I've talked to him and stuff, but I don't know what he's feeling like. He's um, fine. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm coming to do that right now. Yes, Corporal. Mm. Right, best boys. Right, gentlemen, it's came to my attention through Cotton Murphy and Cotton Oyokis that some people in this section are not pulling their weight. So I'm going to give you a little bit of motivation. And the motivation is, if the people, if you don't start working like two section, and you know and you've seen them working together, they all work as a team. I said one thing at the beginning of this, that this is a platoon effort. Do you understand? Don't move. Is this a platoon effort? Yes, yes Corporal. Louder. Yes, yes Corporal! Well, let's make it a big platoon effort, because if five or six or seven of you are slacking, then it means that you're taking the piss out of Cotton Iokis' hard work, and mine, and indeed Cotton Murphy, who's just come in. So what I will do is I will give you one word of advice now. If those people don't work tonight to the same standard as every other person in this section, and as a team, and it doesn't need Wolf or Honzik or any of the other ones that are working to take the lead. The duty recruit, Pittman, who is you, you take the lead. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. And you can work together. Because if you don't, I will put you in my section. You know who you are. And even more so, in this notebook, I know who you are. If you need advice, ask two section how they get their stuff together, how they get it done. Don't just think self, self, self. They're a team. We are a platoon. So let's get it together. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Any questions? No, Corporal. No, Corporal. Right, I will be watching very closely tonight. I will leave here now. You start working. Right now. Who's got the sand stuff? Right, someone put us into teams to do stuff, set us out some All, all we've got to do is sit down and, and we'll list out what needs to be done and, des and designate it all. Yeah. You take yeah. a team, Job done, isn't JC it? take a team, me and uh, Wolf take a team, Pittman take a team. And then everyone, oh, yeah, oh, they, they, yeah, well, even, even if not, I mean, take a group. I don't know, I'm take the lead, so uh, it's quite unusual for me. Um, obviously, things that need done, um, ironing's one thing that always goes out the window. Um, and people are ironing late on into the night and some people have substandard ironing. 
Uh, I know uh, for a fact that um, Roster is very talented at ironing because I think he's been the one that produced the best. So if you don't mind doing that, Roster. Yeah. Okay, uh, Wolf and Fonz um, on boots. And the first thing oh. you do to talk is in here, the floor. You need to get uh, the majority of people on here, probably six, three doing the polishing, three buffing. Are we all in agreement that we are going to sleep on the floor tonight? I think it's a wise idea. Those people who cut their bedboxes is done, but those of us who get done bedboxes done in five minutes. You know, I, I do my bedboxes on my own in five minutes every morning. You do it very fast. So, I mean, same with Ross too as well. He does his on his own straight away, bish, bash, bosh. If it, if it, basically, if it takes two people to do your bedbox, then you're sleeping on the floor. <laughs> I'm bored of this, wanna go? I'm happy though. <laughs> More organised, two section are having a drink to celebrate the Jubilee. One section stock up with supplies of Bourbon biscuits to sustain them through the night's chores. We're actually having a drink on Chris. Um, he left his pay packet, so we're all having a beer on him. And he did um, say yeah. good. <laughs> no, Tom yeah, robbed him. Was... <laughs> 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 his, his last foot wasn't even at the door, no, was <laughs> Hey, boys, he's gone this lady's locker. <laughs> <laughs> so, calm uh, down, calm down. No, I mean, half an hour, so we decided to come over, have a wee drink, and then we'll go back and get stuck back into our gear. Yeah. I mean, most of us are going to we're gonna be sleeping on the floor tonight. We'll have our beds made up, mm. lockers, yeah, everything set. We're going to have a whole inspection <laughs> tomorrow. Floor waxed, and I think we're all going to have a cuddle tonight. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I was told hey, to buy back, this. Back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's for. <laughs> the remotivated one section work into the night. Are you sure there's no wire wool around somewhere inside? Someone's got a section two might have some. Go but we haven't got any. I'll ask Jamie. Jamie, get cammed up and do a raid. <laughs> Everyone seems to really pull together tonight, which is good. Um, everyone knows their jobs. We're working down the list. Everything will be done, and everyone will be in bed for one, two, one, two <laughs> at latest. I'd like everyone to be in bed for one. Twelve o'clock. And two section are ready for bed. You're right if I do the lights. An hour later, and one section are only just settling down. Have a good sleep, everyone. Sleep tight. These floors are, isn't it? At the Browndown training camp, it's the morning of the officer's weekly billet inspection. That means Captain Richard Owen will expect everything to look as immaculate as he does. Rather than mess up their beds by sleeping in them, most of the recruits spent last night on the floor. Two sections showed their solidarity by cuddling up together. It was so uncomfortable and freezing, and hardly any of us got that much sleep. It's funny though, it's like being back at school. <laughs> Sleepover. It's not just the billet that will come under the microscope. The captain expects the lads themselves to scrub up impeccably. As always, the recruits are being judged with points awarded to the best section. The lads of one section are confident. You should see when I walk up Pippin Ray. Three ages, he was just like this, and then it's in the end. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna go off all right today. He's gonna look round and he's gonna say, perfect. <laughs> he's gonna say, outstanding. If he starts tearing into my bed, I'll go schizophrenic. <laughs> yeah. it, it'll just be like stamping on my hopes and dreams. <laughs> Sadly, the lads are deluding themselves if they think they'll get anything past the captain. He's obsessed with detail. You've got fluff all over your chin. It's obviously you haven't shaved. Rust on your bayonet! Sir Roberts, this man tells me he shaved this morning. Let's chin up! You're bloody lying to the platoon commander! You didn't shave this morning unless you're a ready walrus! Did you? Yes, Don't lie! 
Don't lie to me, boy. I I've shoved not. this up your nostrils so far. You'll need it stretching from your ass. You didn't shave. I can see that you didn't shave. Don't lie to me. All of Team Commander. I get it shut up. Go for it. Get this man outside. Quick, get him here, boy. Get the old face. Knock him away. I want him locked away. Dusty, sir. Yeah. Is this your locker? Yes, sir. Come here. There's dust on the top of that locker. Let's have a look. Grab the top of the locker here. Get on that side. Excuse. Right, get here, get here. Run it along. Yes, sir. What's on there? Yes, sir. Dust, Sergeant. It's really shit. Stand on your locker. One section have been the duffers in basic training. They're hoping today will mark a new beginning. Brown stuff. Looks like rust. What's on that ready bearing? Fluff sergeant. Fluff sergeant? You're right, there's ready fluff on it. Shut up, shut up. What is it? It's supposed to be shiny, isn't it? It's soap and facial hair. Name, soldier. Give me the razor up. Lift your head down. Lift it down, you blithering fool. Right. All of you will be outside tonight. Out there with your ready beds laid out. Outside! By now, the lads of Waterloo Platoon know that whatever they do, they'll never get it right. But it's disappointing for one section, who badly need to pick up points. To rub salt into their wounds, Corporal Murphy doles out a further punishment to some of the lads in one section. So, all those who were picked up for not shaving and told the captain that you had, in fact, shaved, will all be on default as does that include yourself? That includes you. You didn't ask me called that includes you. Turn around shut up. Oh well. But just when they think it's all over, it's gonna get a whole lot worse. Get out! Did you say the words shove it? I swear on my heart, Corporal, I did not say it, Corporal. Pitman! Did you say shove it? No, Corporal. Right, everybody in the room. Everybody in the room now! Coral Murphy has just told me he walked out and somebody said, shove it. I believe the comment came from this private here. I don't recall making the comment, but I'll take responsibility <coughs> for the section, Corporal. Fine. Grab your rifle and grab your berry outside. He said he said as he was walking out the door, but he didn't mean to be asked. He just meant that. You ever say anything or anybody in this between ever says anything to one of the issues again, I will personally rip the head off your Yes, Corporal! Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Guard room. I know right as you were. Step up to my timing. Get out, say what? Right, yuff, right, yuff, right, yuff, right, yuff, right, right, well, yuff, right, yuff, right, yuff, right. Boots off. This is my desk. Pick his pockets. Lie down, you deserve it. Now, clean the front of the guardroom. 
Yes, Corporal. Inch by inch. Yes, Corporal. When I return, it will be immaculate. Do not speak to anybody unless <coughs> spoken to. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Lock your arms in. Lock them in. Hold! Hold. Come here. More down there. Facing the other way. Start from there. Do not come up off your knees. I want from here to here, down to the end, immaculate. Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. And it'll give you time to reflect on your insubordinate behaviour. Faster and harder. Insubordination will never ever be tolerated and you will learn not to be insubordinate. Or you will learn to tell the truth, one or the other. Get your laces back in your boots, get your rifle, get your berry, get your belt. You've got approximately three minutes in which to get that sorted, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Punishment over, Corporal Nyargis marches Pittman back at the double to join the others. But he walks straight into more trouble. Why are you breathing at me? Corporal! Stand still. Stand still. Turn to your right. No, I see my Turn to your right. No. Turn to no. your right. Stand still. Stand still. No. Look at me. Look at me. Turn to your right now. Take him to the bloody guard room, Corporal. Knock him away. Normal pace. I want you to march toward the guard room. Normal pace. Do you understand? Quick. March! Pittman's in trouble again. It's a cardinal sin to throw down your rifle. He's now halfway through basic training and should have known better. He's confused between civilian on a show and a 1950s basic training recruit. I then stand there in my military-minded corporal frame and shout, Private Pittman, stand still. He immediately stands still, does an about turn, faces me and says, yes, corporal and then I'm able to talk him round. Two weeks. Basic training lasts for two weeks. Right? And you are going to get through it, aren't you? Look at me. You are going to get through it, aren't you? You have now got five minutes to yourself. If you stab yourself or hang yourself, I'll kill you. Yes, Corporal. Five minutes convinces him he wants out. Pitman! Pitman! Pitman, stand still! Stand still! Right, sit down. Sit down. Do not even consider giving up. It's not an option. Right? Mind over matter. And you're f***ing heading in the wrong direction anyway. Wait till we've done the map reading lessons. Right, come on, let's go. Corporal Nyokas has stopped him from going AWOL. But there's another problem with Pittman. Back in the billet, he's embellishing the story of his earlier punishment. Perhaps to save face, 
Perhaps to grab attention. They made you take all your clothes off? Mm. What, you in your pants? Yeah, the two MPs are there. And then they make you go and sweep outside with an airbrush. Like I can't believe you, you did. Well, you you know, you then they make you mark the sign. Why are you were naked? And then when they told me I was going, oh, Jesus, there's a there. Why are you were naked? I can't believe you did it. And then they told me... Were uh, you naked when you were doing all these activities? Uh, Rubbish. Never did naked cleaning. A lot of the lads are sceptical. They've suspected Pittman's motives in the past. I don't think he fits in because he came here with a certain agenda that had nothing to do with, with this project. Um, this, was, this was a stepping stone for him and he didn't hide that. He told everyone straight away, this is what I want, this is what I want. Corporal Nyarkis must stamp out the infighting before it blows one section apart. He calls over Wolf, who he suspects has been stirring things up between Pittman and the section. What's happened with Pittman? And I want the truth. As far as I know, basically he walked in this afternoon after being off, being shot about, and was going on about how he'd been stripped naked and marched around the yard. Right. And so he was giving all that, so I think everybody was just like, oh, shut up Pittman, shut up Pittman, and all that stuff like that, and he was trying to wind everybody up. And so then he stormed out. And that was it? Yeah, honestly, that was it. Nobody said anything to him of a personal nature? No. If for one moment you think, I don't know what's going on, you are very much mistaken. You can do nothing to surprise me, you can do nothing to shake me. I don't give a toss what your backgrounds are. I don't give a toss if you are a spoiled little rich kid, all right? And about everything your own way, all your life, it changes now. I will fight anybody, anytime. You people want to bitch at each other, bitch at me. Because I will take off somebody's head. This is real stuff I'm talking now. Do not, do not, under any circumstances, ever with me or any of my people. Right? Yes, yes, yes go. Go. Outside, with weapons, fully loaded. Order! If one section have any more bitching to do after the corporal's little pep talk, they now get to take it out on a real man of straw. And I want you to show me your killing face. Ah! Good. Go! Kill! 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 So you will advance on them and you will kill them, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Advance! Advance! What's the bit of fun? Who do you hit? Everyone, Corporal! Everyone! Who do you hit? Leo! Oh, go! Oh, God! Oh, God! Who do you hit? One section! Somebody's f***ing with your mother. Who do you hit? Who do you hit? What? Who's f***ing with your mother? You hit him, don't you? I hate him! You're a f***ing hell! I do! Don't you? That's fine! Come on! Get a f***ing over! Get a f***ing over! Get in there! Imagine that's me and I want you to kill me. You understand? Because you hate me, don't you? Yes, Corporal. I remember doing myself as a recruit and, you know, the Corporal said some horrible things about my mother and my sister and, you know, and I just imagined it was him. You say anything to get them angry and you always know when they flipped because their eyes go wide because you've said something that they really hate and that is the point you tell them to charge. It's controlled aggression. Your mother? Yes, Corporal. Oh, your mother. And ask me, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Advance! Advance! Ah! Advance! Ah! 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 You can't stop stabbing it, you think. You look, you're in the queue and you're thinking, oh, it's a bit silly. But by the time it's you, you're there.
ah, and your face is going and the blood's pumping and you're throwing it in. Turn, twist, out again. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like the guns and the bayonet. I came in as such a peaceful person. That's sort of thing I'd like to do at home. <laughs> I don't really run up to people in the street and <laughs> want to kill them, but it was, you know, it's good release of aggression, so. This is so f***ing pointless and fruitless taking our f***ing shit out there again. Because they failed the captain's inspection this morning, the lads have now got to arrange their billets out on the parade square. turned us through this week a little harder. As you can see where it's going in the square, and it will continue to turn. Right, I want this one moving about two inches that way. That's what be. Is that right? The lads are all ready by 8pm, only to learn the inspection's been put off till tomorrow. <laughs> For the second consecutive morning, Waterloo Platoon wake up on the billet room floor. It rained during the night, and the lads had to bring all their bedding back inside. It's wet, it's cold, and the recruits are miserable. Pointless, but I suppose in some way it's instilling some sort of discipline, They're teaching us some sort of hidden lesson. But I don't know what that is yet. I'm sure I'll find out one day. I think they're just teaching us how to really annoy someone. Morning, one section. Morning, sir. How are we doing? Good, thank you, sir. Well, sir. We sleep well? Yes, yes, sir. Morning, Willingham. Morning, sir. How are you doing? Morning, thank you, sir. Judas Priest, Willingham. Someone shit all over your webbing. Look at the state of it. They're black. They're alive. 9212, Private Cook, sir. How are you doing, Cook? Very good, thank you, sir. Sleep well? Yes, thanks. Breakfast OK? Superb. Your boots are filthy, Webb. Yes, sir. Don't bother cleaning your boots for an inspection in the morning. No, sir. Obviously not. Like your bane's rusty. Look, at the end. Set. Pro on report. By two lot. You have got precisely 25 minutes to get all this squared away and be ready for roll call. Go! The morning's brightening up for one section. They've come out on top after the inspection and magnanimously helped two section bring in their lockers. They actually came to us and asked us for help. So, that makes them... Makes they them, understand how yeah, good we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have to read in bedtime stories at night. <laughs> <laughs> Go and tuck them in, you know. Actually gave all of us a lift, though, because everybody just kind of perked up and said, look, we've actually got all our own stuff done, yeah. and we're actually able to go and help yeah. and take part in the, the whole kind of pl platoon uh, mentality as well. Yeah. So. Um, I think they also realised, and I think they... Uh, safety catch, Safety catch, Safety catch, um, safety catch But um, uh, I think they also uh, realised that if they can get all their own stuff done and help us, perhaps they have to butt their ideas up. One section are now on and up. They've, they've been through the, the bad, bad stages. They've, they've been brought down to their absolute lowest. I now have nothing but respect for those boys in my billet. Has there just been an outbreak of morale? <laughs> Yes, Corporal. Always have to Corporal. Corporal. Always got morale, Corporal. Hanzig, don't. Hanzig. <laughs> Hanzig. <laughs> Count to a thousand. Loud. One, two, three, four. <laughs> to a thousand. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, 
After his outburst yesterday, even Private Pittman has realised that being part of a team has its value. I think my problem is sometimes I keep things, you know, in here, um, and I, you know, should talk to people about them. And I think I've learned that now that when I do start getting, um, you know, upset or frustrated or whatever, and I should go and speak to one of my teammates. I know that that's, you know, that's what they're there for. Or I'll turn to Corporal Nyokis. Um, in retrospect, I wouldn't handle it that way. I would, uh, you know, just kept my cool and later on blew my top in the ablutions of my own or whatever. <laughs> but. After lunch, it's back out on the training ground for more competition. This time, it's the Bren gun drill, which Corporal Murray turns into a relay race. One section believe they're on a winning streak. Go! In keeping with 1950s training, the corporals use every opportunity to foster rivalry between the two sections. It's a matter of personal pride that their section comes out on top. Come on, I want to see this. You're my brain gunner. Show me, show me. Come on. Two section down here. Two section have lost again, and to show his displeasure, Corporal Murray lines up his recruits for a lesson in pain, carrying the wombat, a 62-pound artillery shell. It does not hurt. Keep going. As soon as we get out, I'll be going to the old veterans pub to go, oh, I remember what it was like too. I was there, national service. Um, but yeah, I can understand because you've been through so much. Because if you think about it, with your normal, excuse the term, civvy mates, like with your normal mates, you wouldn't have gone through, I can't believe I just said that. Um, you wouldn't have gone through half the stuff you've gone through with, with this lot. Hurry up! Get up, everyone! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Time to wrestle When you finish you must black go After two weeks, there's only one thing lacking. You miss your partners or whatever, Christy. Even the ugly women outside are starting to look good now. I mean, I think everyone has started to appreciate that. Uh, especially for us who's got girlfriends, it's, you know what I mean? It's yeah, it's difficult, but not one out, no. <laughs> I haven't not one out yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> the mood has to be right for me. <laughs> Dim the lights, a bit, bit of soothing music from Steve. Yeah. There's some candles on the lock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start pointing fingers, but Harrison, what have you been doing in the shower late at night? <laughs> you had a spring in your I reckon you put stuff in the teeth. They definitely, yeah, definitely do, because I normally, you, every bloke wakes up standing to attention with their private set of attention. Well, but in the, one in the section real world, I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it just hasn't happened here. At the end of the day, it's you know 14, 15 blokes all sitting around in a room together. It is a, like a, a little worry at the back of everyone's mind that you're going to go to the bed and get touched up or something. And when you no, first came here, it's like it's full in other geezers. You don't even know. So yeah, it's a bit I, of a joke. If you joke about it, it makes it it's easy to deal with. Then. Well, we started off about how you came and you had a bottle of Vaseline and some condoms did, in the back. That was Nick. That wasn't me. It was Nick. That was Nick. Vaseline. No, that's. Yeah, Nick brought. Yeah, customers. and you had a pair of things and in your locker Nick's as well. Two didn't he? personal items. He bought. <laughs> no a way, wait. And a pack of condoms. No, wait, wait. Let me. Uh, <laughs> no, Nick, is that true? Let me is, it true? is it true? Is it true? Yes or no? What happened? Is it true? Yes I was no. stopping out with girlfriends the night before. Girlfriend. 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 <laughs> my girlfriend, <laughs> Joanne. Yeah. Come on. Oh. And uh, I had a couple of condoms left in my bag. And when, when I was emptying my bag, 
they, uh, they found the condoms. Because <laughs> Eagle came up to me yesterday and gave me something. He said, there you go, puppy. <laughs> and I just went, <laughs> what? <laughs> he said, there you go, puppy. And then someone, and then like yesterday, Lads, he goes, um, was, no, that's not singing? right, sweetheart. And I was just like, hey, well, it's puppy one day, sweetheart the next day. The, the sergeant's always talking about, do, me, do you fancy me, boy? Uh, you give me a warm feeling in my dick. Um, it's just all the boys together, isn't it, really? It's all a bit dodgy. The worrying fact is I sleep across from Alex, so. <laughs> I sleep next to him. Alex is the raving. Look, I can show you photos of my girlfriend if you really need to. You know I, I mean? likely cover story as well. well. It's the morning of the intersection boxing contest, and even before roll call, the lads can't resist talking about it. Introducing Jody, the bed box. <laughs> Cold blue. Wearing the white sheet shorts <laughs> with the woolen trim. <laughs> I reckon they're best three at all handling the Irish guy and the Scottish guy. I'd fight the big guy, Larson. No, no, not the Irish guy. You're kidding, aren't you? I'd prefer someone on my own side. Have you seen Eagle? Yeah. Eagle, he's a nuts as well. It's a good job he's in fighting. Oh, no, it is. He's quite quick as well. Stand at ease, stand easy everywhere. Don't you look about. Listen in. Two! <laughs> The lads arrive for the competition. There's a real ring, a real referee, and it makes them all really nervous. We are not going to lose this. Do you understand? We will never lose anything against this section. Right, touch the pain stick. We don't feel pain, do we? We don't feel pain. Who's going to win? Two, two sections! Who's going to win? Two sections! I am not going to do all the crap that was done in there. The second you stand in that ring, you look up and you look at your opponent <coughs> and you sight him out. Do not take your eyes off of his face. Do not come out swinging. You see an opportunity, stick it on him. When you climb into the ring for the first time, it, it's a weird feeling. From the outside, it, it looks, I don't know, about 16 foot by 16 foot. When you get into it, to the other corner is about three miles. Then when the referee says box, this guy seems to clear that three miles really quickly. You know, inside your adrenaline's rushing, you one minute you're all hyped up and you're ready for it, next minute you get time to think about it and you're scared. It was just you and that other guy in the world. Um, and it, it is frightening. It really is frightening. Each bout will last for 90 seconds. Since the 1950s, health and safety rules have moved on. Their 50s counterparts would not have worn helmets. First up is Honzik. He's drawn the short straw against Leyland. Busy. I didn't destroy my coon girl. We a bit quick for it. Wasn't fit enough. I didn't know what I was facing. I had my back to my, my opponent. I turned around and I saw, I knew in my head it was Leyland. As he turned around, I was thinking, it's not Leyland, it can't be. And I turned around and I was like, well, oh, bugger, I'm going to have to get on the job in and So I thought, I'll give it my all. If that's not good enough, then at least I can say I've given it 100%. The outcome of each bout is decided on points, a knockout, or by the referee stopping the fight. Who's the winner?
scores at 4 all, Neil from two section is up against the ferocious Jody Copeland. Section triumph, but it was a close call, and at least for now, one section seemed to have put their differences behind them. Three cheers for one section. Hey, hey. 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 Who is disappointed in that? Good, because no one am I. That is, where are you? You gave me your own, and I'm not going to give me your own. I'm not going to well done to everyone who won, and most importantly, well done to everyone who lost as well. Yeah. No, no one's got anything to be ashamed of, because we won as a team. Two sections! Two sections! Two sections! Well done. Come on, well done. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Well done, For the last two weeks, the corporals have been helping the recruits get an early start. Some still need more help than others. Get up! Stop! What do you think you'll do? What do you think you are doing? Now get up! Get up! No! Get up! No! You think God is weak too and you can just lie in bed? Stand your attention! Do you think because it's weak too you can lie in bed? No, Corporal! Well, get your stuff and get moving! Go! Go! There are few airs and graces in 1950s style basic training. Anybody out? More than three means you are having a wank. You are stood there over the rhino pulling it like crazy. Flush it! It's not working, Corporal. No, because you are an arse. Get out of the way. Corporal Niogas is in a bad mood after his section got beaten in yesterday's platoon boxing competition. His dream of beating two section is disappearing down the pan. Unlike Alex Kinsey's early morning deposit. You will come back today and you will flush it. Yes, Doctor. Yesterday, some of the lads got in trouble over failing to shave. Despite already suffering from a boxing injury, 
Sam Webb is taking no chances. The thing is, I'm meant to be on the report this morning, so I'm going to get as close as possible. And it's getting a bit too close. Because um, lately, I've shaved and it still hasn't made any difference. Sam Webb's over there chopping his face off. <laughs> yeah. He's just cut his face off. <laughs> there's, there's, like, there's lads in here who've got like a full facial hair stubble, haven't they? Full grown beard <laughs> all over. And they shave, right? <laughs> they shave. And they get it all at the same length. It's not shaved off. They get it all at the same length and he walks past and goes, Oh, your boots need shining. Mooches off. And there's me on the end, baby face. You can't like, grow facial hair and a, a cat could lick it off. And he picked me up for it. The last few days have been quite good, but um, I've got a bad feeling inside that it's going to be like going back to day one again. It's the halfway point, so it's quite, it's quite a big uh, milestone for most people. I think it's possibly a milestone for the NCOs as well. I think they've decided that uh, halfway now and uh, we're into the system, so it's now time to kind of squeeze the press and put some more pressure on. It might only be the halfway stage, but the recruits are already starting to look like fully fledged 50 soldiers. Today, the lads need to be at their best for the weekly inspection by the company sergeant major. Morning, sir. Water Lipton, formed up, sir. Good morning, Water Lipton. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Water Lipton. Good morning, sir. Standard. Ice. Look at your brasses. When did you do them? When did you do them? Answer me! I can't fully remember, sir. No, you can't remember, because you didn't bloody do them. Disgusting! Look down. What's that there? Is that your <laughs> breakfast? Look up now. What is it? I don't know, sir. You also show stain removed from battle dress. Sir! The lads still haven't learned some of the tricks of the trade. When did you clean your brasses? Last week, sir. Last week? Why didn't you clean them last night? Answer me! Didn't have time, sir. Bollocks! Bollocks! Tell you one thing. The next buddy that I catch with dirty flesh is going to be in big trouble. There is no excuse for being dirty. Despite the sergeant major's disparaging manner, secretly he's rather impressed. And I can see the vast improvement. Which yeah. is, that's what we're after. That's I what agree. we're after. I okay. agree. But well, don't don't tell them that yet. Uh, no. Well, we don't intend to. Basic training isn't just about good drill. During the post-war call-up, 395 National Service men were killed on active service. Corporal Murray is actually an Army Sergeant Major, with active service in Sierra Leone and Bosnia. Get by, you two close! Get separated! Go back! Keep coming! Keep coming! It's a matter of pride that his recruits reach the highest standards. You will rehearse this till you are sick of it, until it becomes a drill, like riding a bike or even riding your girlfriend. I don't care. You will be better at this than doing that to her. Trust me. Unload! You know how to unload? Keep cocking the rifle! Unload! Jamie Dodd is feeling the strain. What is up? Your hand, eh? Work on your muscles here. Since training began, Jamie's been having problems with his feet. Thanks, Walk. Man. Sorry about this. Nice easy one. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere, and I don't want to get kicked out just because of something stupid like that. Out, 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 out. Flat feet was a reason for being exempted military service. Wait. 
Jamie's condition is getting so bad that he now fears the worst. I think I'm about to be sent home. I can't do everything. I can't do anything. I can't run, I can't walk. You can't walk? What are you doing there then? I'm gonna march, Corporal. Is it worth me keeping you? Yes, Corporal. For what? You give me a reason to keep you. I wanna be here, Corporal. I'm good for the section. I agree with you. I think you are good for the section. And for that very reason, I'm gonna keep you. However, I'm going to have to put you on to light duties, all right? You can do whatever training you can. Come on now, snap out of it. And you'll peel lots of potatoes and mop lots of floors and clean lots of windows, all right? Yes, Corporal. Right, get yourself back over there. Corporal. You are now excused marching, so walk carefully. Thank you, Corporal. Get those boots off your feet. Thank you, Corporal. Want some chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Get that down your neck, I'll cheer you up, mate. Hey, you are, Tim. Cut me already, aren't you? Wonderful. Thank you. Just for that brief moment when I thought that I'd be going, um, the world collapsed. I just want to stay. I'll peel everyone's spuds. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll knit everyone's undies. I'll sew everyone's flies up. It's just, just we need you to make us laugh, mate. You're a funny man. We need you to make us laugh. <laughs> just funny. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm putting on a funny walk. It's just our walk. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no insole. It's just all flat. All the pressure is on, so every time I put my foot down, it hits every part of it. Excuse the toenails, Mum. Jamie might be on light duties, but he doesn't plan on being idle. So what time is it? It's time for a wank. Corporal Nyokis is getting frustrated with his recruits. Is this morning better than yesterday morning, gentlemen? Yeah, let's go, bro! They're still lagging badly behind two section in the overall ratings. What would you do with that? Do it right, Corporal. So if you were me, you'd put that right, would you? Oh, no, 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 I should, Corporal. What would you do if you was me? Make him do it again, Corporal. Really? Yes, Corporal. Today, his lads have a chance to make amends in the intersection cross-country run. They get off to a bad start. Halter, didn't I say yesterday about the bottom of the daps? Dirty plimsolls. I'd have to clean them, Corporal. So if I go over to the ablutions now and try to clean these, they'll come up no better than you've got them. So you told me you tried to clean them, and now you're telling me you haven't cleaned them. I went over with brush corporal. Well, obviously not very well. Right, corporal Nyokas has his own method for cleaning plimsolls. Oh, right. When I say go, you will step forward. You will use your nail brush, and you will clean the bottom of your daps. I will go and inspect two section. When I return, everybody's daps will be cleaned. Do you understand? Yes, or go! Go! That's starting to make a difference. Yes, yes go, go! It's a timed run. It's your own best effort. Your times will be recorded. They will count towards your section. It's a competitive event, so work hard. The first man over the line needs to be a one-section person. Why aren't they inside? Let 
Sí, sí. Menos. Way out in front is two sections pocket rocket, David Gardner. At only five foot six, he's the shortest recruit. 28, 10. 28, 15. 28, 20. 28, 22. It's first and second for two sections. We want to beat one section quite badly, so it's all points on the board, which are... Be pleased to have no doubt. If the next person in is two section, then one section will suffer like they have never suffered before in these past two weeks. It's not looking good. Thomas O'Hanlon from two section comes third. The best one section can manage is fourth with Adi Adi Bio. Get in here! Right. 38, 29. Bringing up the rear is needlework expert Adam Spires. Get a move on! Get out of here! If I come up behind you in my vehicle, I will put you in it. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. 46, 13! I thought if I could, could keep a steady pace, I thought I could make. But uh, I've kept being pushed to the limit. And at times I thought, I can't go any faster. Well done, first man Gardner. Bloody good effort. Two sections take all the points. What went wrong today? Hansig. Yes, Corporal. What went wrong today? Don't know, Corporal. How did they have the first and the last man in and they still beat us? I think they might have cheated, Corporal. Anybody else want to elaborate on that? No, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. We think that two of them might have taken another route. We're not saying they cheated on purpose. A show of hands, who thinks there was cheating went on? Bearing in mind that a bad workman always blames his tools. That'll just be you then, Hansi. Cos I had it down to things like you slowing down to push on others. Surely you speeding up would have spurred others, would it not? Maybe, Corporal. I am going to turn each and every one of you into men. As of this day forth, you will be the first out on parade. You will be the smartest. You will have everything ready to hand. You will no longer screw it up. If the points I've just raised are not put into place, as of Monday morning, your life will be hell. OK, what about Dodd? Dodd's, um, he, he's having some problems at the moment with his feet. Every aspect of the lad's performance is under constant scrutiny. Just like in the 50s, they're competing for best recruit. Max Philcraft. No. Um, again, he was in line for champion recruit last night, and he's uh, he's an hour one at there. Has he let himself down? After his effort in the cross country, the corporals decide on half pint. David Gardner is favourite to win. What about Gardner? Okay. It's got to be a ten. Yeah. He okay. tries. He motivates. He's a leader. That's the thing. He's a leader. Moving on to Wolf. Public school educated Tom Wolfe made a good first impression, but recently is attracting attention for the wrong reasons. He thinks he is the best on that drill square. He can't salute. And he ain't that good. Mm. An attitude, mm. interesting one. He does appear to be changing, but I've got to say, I don't trust him. No. I, I don't, not, don't trust him in theft wise or anything. I just, there's something about him and he has mood swings. Yes. Yeah, but he's, he's not playing it to our tune. The lads need to be kept at boiling point. 
they have another chance to battle for top spot in the log relay. Within seconds, competitive spirit turns to naked aggression and a fight breaks out. You do this, Wolf. Stop it. Tom Wolf and Paul Eagle from rival sections have to be physically pulled apart. Wolf, to me! To me! You lot are wasting. I will teach you to turn a physical training session into bloody fisticuffs. Get a load back up there. I'm disappointed with you. Wolf and Eagle are disqualified, and the sections must complete the relay without them. Go! Get away! It's another disaster for one section. Without Tom Wolf, they fail badly. Hands on your heads, breathe deeply, get your breath back. Breathe deeply. Bring the log back here. Replace your log this section with start position. Get your log back over there. The fight has caused tension among the recruits. You don't watch a fight go on. You get in there and you split it up. I was the only one who got in there and split it up. So what? So what? So next time a fight kicks off, we'll just let it happen, yeah? And Finney, what happened today? It's too late. It's just stupid, yeah. He's just pulled him in. Where's Wolf? He's gone with Naoki. Is he going to get nasty? For what happened today, yeah? But at the end of the day, it is a platoon thing. So forget all the anger, yeah? Two section blame Wolf for the bust up. He was just laughing at us, he was laughing, he knew he was in the way. We were going, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way now. I think I felt certainly um, afterwards it, it was unnecessary. Definitely unnecessary. Um, however, um, I'm intensely competitive and, and I enjoy competition. And I, I, I went back down from a situation. Thoughts of Tom drops a bit of day. I think if he lacks self control, then in what other area would happen? But he's a good lad and. I class him as one of my really good mates in here, but what he did the day was wrong. So far, the lads have been beasted for dusty berries, dirty buttons, and even smiling. How will the corporals deal with a punch-up? The used two are going to shake hands, and you're going to apologise to the platoon. Do you understand? Yes, corporal. Yes, corporal. Louder. Yes, yes corporal. corporal. We'll shake hands. Turn around and face the platoon. Both these at the same time. We apologise, Waterloo Platoon. We apologise, Waterloo Platoon! Right, Phil, I can hurry up. Obviously, fighting doesn't compare to having a dirty mug. Yesterday, three recruits were put on a charge for lying to an officer. Today, they must receive their punishment. Are you 2381-9223, Private Webb? Yes, sir. Webb, it's charged that on the 3rd of June at 0745 hours, you told a falsehood to a commissioned officer, contrary to Section 13 Baker of the Army Act 1955. Yes, sir. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. The three are in trouble for saying they'd shaved when they hadn't. Right, Harrison. <laughs> Get out, come back in. Get a grip of this man's drills, Sergeant Sullivan. Quick, bad, that's right, that's right, that's right, back time. All right, do it again. Come back here. Bad, that's right, that's right, back time. Detail, out. Detail, that time. You need to work on your drill, Harrison. Private Sergeant, you're being charged on the 3rd of June at 0745 hours. You told a falsehood to a commissioned officer. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. Go! Last up is Nicholas Holbrook. It's not the first time he's been in trouble. Time! Why did you not shave on that day? Because it was hurting my skin, sir. Because it was hurting your skin. So why did you tell me you had shaved? I didn't, sir. You didn't tell me you had, you had shaved? I, sh I said I shaved at 
the, f the previous evening, sir. No, you didn't. You said you'd shaved. I said, did you shave this morning? And you said, yes. It's only when you were questioned further by the sergeant that you turned around and said that you'd shaved the prior evening. Is that correct? No, sir. So you're calling me a liar? No, sir. Sergeant Sullivan, get him out in the square. Give this man some remedial drill right now. Sir! It's dead. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, air out! Turn! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, air out! Turn! We can sort out the rights and wrongs of it. But at the moment, Holbrook, I'm getting tired. I don't know about you. What do you reckon? Yes, Sergeant. Should we get it over and done with? Yes, Sergeant. It's a lot easier, Holbrook, trust me. Should we start again, shall we, Holbrook? Yes, sir. OK, on the 3rd of June, 0745 hours, you told a falsehood to a commissioned officer, contrary to Section 13 Baker of the Army Act 1955. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. Do you accept my award or do you wish to go forward for trial by court-martial? Accept your award, sir. Right. You'll have two days restriction of privileges. Yes, sir. And you'll be put on the shelf for 45 minutes. Is that understood? Yes, sir. OK, get out of my office. This evening, the three will discover what 45 minutes on the shell is all about. Nothing seems to faze Private Holbrook. If, if you let things get to you, then you, then you will start to um, find it a difficult experience. Um, people have different ways of dealing with it. My way is to smile and not let it get to me. Your eyes will feel watery, feel a bit of stinging. In the, on the skin, and your throat will get all tight. Do not panic. When you get outside, I will tell you, and I'll repeat this, you will not rub your eyes or your face. At the height of Cold War paranoia, a 50s recruit was thoroughly drilled in the use of a gas mask. <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. You can talk. It's not a way into going to a death chamber sort of thing. None of us really know what to expect or anything like that, so I think we're all a bit nervous. It's part of the parcel of being here. And a um, man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> Remember what you will do, you've got to do in there. Take your respirator off. Name, rank and number. Put your respirator on straight away. Don't try and get cocky or I will keep it off and you will suffer. You have? Of course, the strap over. Stop oh, flapping, it's only gas. Go! Come on! Here, first man. Come on. Stand there. But what the lads don't know is that there isn't any gas in the chamber. This substance might smell lethal, but it's actually harmless. Gas, gas, gas. Private Dot, 2G819224, Corporal. <clears throat> gas, gas, gas! Gas, gas, gas! Gas, gas, gas! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up. Stay <laughs> <laughs> <Stand> still. <coughs> right. I'm now officially shitting it now. So am I. Yeah. I'm very... A minute ago I was like, yeah, it's only gas. <laughs> Smoke it. <laughs> no, no, I'm not at all. Last man in, Sam Webb, is showing signs of panic. Don't be nervous, OK? Yes, sir. I will not let anything happen to you. If I do that, it gets harder, doesn't it? What's up? You scared? On his turn, Sam can't bring himself to remove his mask. Come on, here a minute. I would never let him harm you, would I? No couple. So stop this in front of them idiots. Yeah. Right? Stop it. Right, everything is safe. Right? Got to use my respirator. There you go. Private Web 23819223. Gas, 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 gas. gas. Come on. Come on. Um, well, I panicked a bit beforehand because I didn't like the fact that it was in confined space and um, my gas mask seemed to keep sucking to my face when I was trying to breathe. So. Not everyone fared so badly. 
I've had worse gas come out of my ass last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have been in our okay. village. That's what you're quite literally out of the The lads who earlier lied about shaving must now face the music. They've been ordered to do 45 minutes with the platoon mascot, an artillery shell weighing 62 pounds. Bunny hop all the way to there. Hurry up. And shout, I will not lie. 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 Keep going. Don't arm me. Get your arms wrapped around it. I will not lie. Keep going. Pain <coughs> is only a mere sensation. Keep going. Keep going! Oh, God. I can't Don't go you on. ever say you can't. Don't ever say in my section that you can't. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Don't ever say you can't. Look where he is. That is the enemy position. I will get you there. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Right, well, you f***ing help me. Now, get moving. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Don't you ever say that you can't make it. That means I'm leaving a man behind, doesn't it? Yes, Corporal. So I'm not going to carry you and the shell. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Right? You drop that shell and you will die. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Lean forward. Lean forward. Oh. 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 Lying to an officer was as serious an offence in the 50s as it is today. Give me ten good ones and we may end this. Give me ten bad ones and we'll hear for longer. Stand by. I'm one. And no, at the same time, you work. Work. Work as a team. Shut up. Shut up. The corporals won't be satisfied until one of the lads breaks. They've got the one back between the braces as well. You yeah. absolute bastards. Not giving them any mercy. Be careful not to get caught. Leave him! The first to crack is Sam Webb. <laughs> get up. Get up! Stand up. Leave him! Stand up. Stop it. You turn. Stop it. These three just had an experience that they will never forget. Don't let it be any use. As you get as much moral courage as these three, who did it in front of one section, and I did it in front of them for a reason. Right, and I did it till I broke somebody. Do you understand that? Yes, yes sir. Especially him, him, and even more so, him. And I'm going to talk to him separate outside in a minute. You, get your ass outside. So use, that's the moral courage I want. What they just did. That is what I want in this section. To be able to carry a man when he's really at his weakest. Get in there. Get round him. Get round him. Right. Carry on. They turn and face me. Never mind this lot. It's good to cry. I would take you to war. All right? Give me a hand. All right? Back in Civvy Street, Jamie Dodd is a wannabe musician. Despite being injured, he's still proving a useful member of the team. We're, uh, we're writing our song uh, or our, our, for a sketch show tomorrow for ca Captain's um, birthday tomorrow night. So me and Ad have been writing uh, a little song. And we could, we first we struggled, then we thought, why not write it about our favourite man yes. in the entire world? Open eye, oh kiss. We wish you were our dad. If you were, we wouldn't have ended up so bad. Copeland, I owe a kiss. We wish you were a star. And when we get out of here, our lawyers will 
find out where you are. <laughs> 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 As day 17 draws to an end, the lads have a chance to reflect on the life they've left behind. For postman Kenny Poulter, who has an 11-month-old son, the pain of separation has at least been worthwhile. But, like, being here has helped me a lot as well, because I was going to join the army, but, like, doing this uh, has, like, <laughs> made, me has made me realise, like, I wouldn't be able to, like, stay away from home for that amount of time. So, that, that, like, doing this has made me... Uh, has helped me make uh, a life-changing decision, big time. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Corporal. Today is what? Saturday, Corporal. Who does day today belong to? Bob Corporal. Who? Get your washing and shaving kit, get outside. What? Sunday is definitely not going to be a day of rest for one section. What happens when you leave your locker over? It entices theft. Corporal. Pass the good word. I will not be ignored. I will not be paid lip service. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Let's go, bro! Do you understand? Let's go, bro! Once they've cleaned the roof, they can start the house. The lads may think their punishment's over, but it's only just begun. Tonight. Captain Richard Owen wants to check on Tom Wolfe, who he thinks could be a first-class soldier if he put his mind to it. How you doing, Wolfe? Right, thank you, sir. That is. Yeah, I'm glad to say you've improved in the last week, which is what I expected and hoped for after our chat and the numerous other chats that you've had. The one area that is still slightly lacking um, is attitude. It is intermittent slightly. But in the main, vast improvement. No problems on anything else, as I'd expect with your background. You're shining on the majority of other things. Sunday is the only day the boys get to hear from home, and they're waiting eagerly for letters. The corporals have a supremely vicious plan. Fall in, don't move. Stand at attention everywhere. Hey, right, gentlemen. We warned you this morning that things were going to get harder. And you obviously think that we're too soft now and that we're just going to let you go on for the next two weeks. Well, you were supposed to get something today at three o'clock, weren't you? Yes, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Corporal. What was that? Let's go. Post. post. What do you think that post is now? And that then. So I don't give a f about your girlfriends, your mothers, or anything else. If you start playing our game, this will never happen again. Do you understand? Yes, yes Corporal. Corporal. You will never, ever get any post while you're here if you don't start screwing the nut and producing the goods. What? I don't see what we've done today that warrants you burning the post. I'll do what I want to do. If you don't like it, get out. No. Listen in. Fall out! Oh. Hello, 
that's all that about, man. They're all about team spirit, yeah. Like, you, you need to keep your strengths up about you. Yeah? I've looked forward, right? Yeah. having a letter from Gemma from That's what I'm saying. Chase that's the only thing like, we're getting at the moment from home. Yeah, they can go. What's the mood then, gentlemen? Good, Corporal. Why? Because we're getting on with it, Corporal. Power? Pretty gay, Corporal. Am I that pissed off with you? Yes, cool. Yes, but the most important thing in any soldier's life is getting his mail. And regardless of how pissed off I am at you, I would not do that. One thing puts me on a slight high. Cool Murray has just gone next door with about that much mail. So we've won something. As you honestly think that I'm that cool. But you can go in there. Put it in the paste anyway. Will it Thank you, Corporal! Hanze! Thank you, Corporal! Hanze! Thank you, Corporal! Hanze! Corporal! How you boys are gonna share this out with people that haven't got any? Hanze! Corporal! You're not opening the mail yet? Put it on your bed, whoever gets the most buys the section a drink tonight. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Anybody can guess who this is, I will buy them a drink. Ponzi! Thank you, Corporal. You don't look very happy, you're getting loads of letters and you don't look very happy, why not? Look at Honzi. Look at Honzi. Look at him. Look at his face. I have to, Corporal. That's it. Right, who never got any mail? You didn't get any mail? Why did you not get any mail? Nobody loves me, Corporal. Dan Neal has to wait till last to get his mail. Dr. Neal. Run! Five. Do not put you anywhere close to Honzi. It's OK, Corporal. It's good enough for me, Corporal. Drinks are on me, then! Are you, Honzi? Time's yours, boys. I forget everything I've said about him. He's a mean old man. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Wolfe is having further doubts about whether he wants to get through it. Corporal Nyokis knows it and makes a bargain with him. If you were going to go, which way would you go? I'd rather not have to, to say I wanted to go, I'd rather just go. And at what point do you think that would occur? It would probably occur in the next few days, if that was going to happen. I need to know if it's going to happen. How's that going? I, I won't stop you, but I need to know if it's going to happen. All right? That's good. Believe it or not, if anything does happen, I find it quite worrying. That's good. Because I don't know the frame of mind that you people are in. That's good. You've suffered an awful lot over the past few weeks and may suffer an awful lot over the next few weeks. So anybody that leaves and doesn't make it known that they're leaving leaves me with a bit of worry. And you could be out there stringing yourself up or something. It's the captain's birthday and both sections are under orders to entertain him. Thinking it's a walk in the park it wasn't that way. Because Jamie Dodd is on light duties, he's had time to write the songs for both sections. It's a welcome chance for the boys to pay tribute to their corporals. Murray's a psycho, Nyokis is mad. Put them together and don't cross their paths. I'll kick your ass. Don't talk for you, what? Lads on me way. Ah. <laughs> oh, <God>. That's it! <laughs> now, James, Cool Murray has picked out a couple of observation specialists. Cool Murray! <laughs> Shut up! So, Cool Murray, can you possibly shut this rabbit of soldiers up, please? 
Stand by two section. You don't want to feel this. <laughs> Bring me your two finest observation specialists. Nah. Sam! Hey, Beatles, get out of here now! <laughs> These are the two most specky spastics I have ever seen in my life. Now piss off. One section have dedicated a whole song to their corporal. Keeps breaking our mask, keeps breaking our room. Our boots are so shiny at night, they reflect the moon. He thinks we're all slow and have no brains. We need to spend more time inside in the boring rain. Coponiocus. You are a star Really love the way You can throw our kids so far <laughs> Corporal Iocus You are a star And when we get out of here Our lawyers will find out where you Hey right, gents, have another couple of beers, enjoy yourself, but remember what you've got tomorrow morning. Big inspection tomorrow. This is the test one. This is what counts. Cheers. 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 Well done, lads. How would you think that went then? I think it went very well, actually. Considering they were taking the piss out of me until the end when they took the piss out of you. Well, I know what they're saying is that if I'd have been there at the beginning, they wouldn't be the arses that they are now. The boys may have softened up their captain last night, but it remains to be seen whether it'll help them with this morning's inspection. Good morning, sir. Morning, Paul Mark. Oh. Morning, sir. Morning, two section. Morning, morning, sir. What is this? Dirt sergeant. Dirt sergeant. Dirt sergeant. Of course it's ruddy dirt, isn't it? So what's that? Dirt, Sergeant. Dirt! You're bloody right, it's dirt! Tell me what that is. Dust, Sergeant. What is that? Dust, Sergeant! I can't hear you. Dust, Sergeant! It's shit! Not dust! Come here. Run your finger along there. And what have we got? Dust, Sergeant! Get inside your locker. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sergeant! Right, what is this? Two sections are being ripped apart and Sergeant has white gloves on his hand and they are dirty already. So stand by. I was going to see if one section were any better. Your section appeared to have slacked off, Colt Murray. Sir. I wonder how one section's going to get on. I hope they get on as bad as us, for your sake. One in one section. Morning, sir! Well, look at this. The officers found that much dirt in the other sections. Your hand is the left hand. What is this wolf here? Dirt sergeant. Corporal Sergeant. Corporal Sergeant, how many more ranks have I got? Dirt Sergeant. You're already right, it's dirt! Move your bed, soldier. Move it! Thank you, Corporal. Look Show at that there. What is that there? Quick bag. What the hell is that? What is it? A drawer full of ready shit. That's what it is, isn't it? Yes, Sergeant. Get in your drawer. Get in it. Get in it. Don't look at me. Get in your ready drawer. Get in it. Get in it. What? Get in it. Now, what have we got? Me and my drawer, Sergeant. You're a ready mess! A disgrace! Aren't you? Yes, Sergeant! What are you? A ready, ready disgrace, Sergeant! Get your drawer and throw it across the floor. 
2200 tonight. The whole platoon outside. Bell kit, brass is clean. This is not a good show for the officer this morning. Thank you, Corporal. Sir. Sir. Well, gentlemen, I thought that went rather well, didn't you? Mate, he's a dick. And he was out of order because I'm supposed to be allowed to have that personal drawers or anything we want. And I had all my letters in there, like, in a nice order and stuff. And everyone I was writing home to. And all my photos and stuff. And they've just all been wrecked. <sighs> You can't have anything yourself in this place at all. You can't have your lock. You can't have your photos up in your locker because it goes mad. And you can't put your photos in your drawer because it goes mad. What's the point? Just may as well just not bring photos or get letters or anything. This morning's trauma has tired Michael out. Excuse me, sweetheart. Excuse me, darling. What? Any chance you can wake up? What? Is there any chance you could wake up? Because the corporal's in the f room! Whoa. Whoa, get up! Right, listen. Show parade tonight at 10 o'clock in overalls denim, absolutely gleaming, immaculate, will be in perfect order outside for the two commanders' inspection. Stand easy, stand easy. Stand easy! Did you check yourself before you came out tonight? <coughs> Stop coughing! Who gave you permission to bloody well cough? No, I'm sorry. Well, don't bloody cough then! Stop bloody coughing! Get your ruddy hand down! Don't smile, boy. Get down. Get down in a press-up position. Start doing press-ups now. All the way up, down, and you can carry on now. I'll knock that smile off your face. Crap, pop the blade there. See? What's up? Let me know when you're not smiling anymore. All the way down. All right, not, sir. Get going. Keep going. It's got shit on your berry. Clean it off. Quick rank. Stand up. That was not good enough! You don't present yourself in front of the officer in that state! 2300 hours, back here, in your best kit! Go! Come on, get on! What the lads don't yet know is that these inspections will continue on the hour throughout the night. Gentlemen, you may be wondering why you're getting all your dress checked. The simple reason is, it is not up to scratch. And we will check every dress until we're satisfied. Do you understand? Yes, go, go! You'll be back out here at 12 o'clock. And you'll be in your PT kit. Yes, go, go! You'll be back at 1 o'clock wearing battle order with helmet. Yes, go, go! Four! Oh. Right, Wolf. Straps too loose. Far, far too loose. Oh. Look at that. That needs to be tighter, doesn't it? Yes, Sergeant. Your webbing is not good enough. You will be back out here at two o'clock in your best battle dress, best boots, with your grey coats on. Morning, Waterloo platoon. Good morning, Sergeant. What a beautiful morning it is, is it not? Yes, yes Sergeant. Sergeant. I can hear the sincerity flowing through your veins, gentlemen. The next inspection will be by the medical officer at 0300 hours. The medical officer will be inspecting for hygiene, dress, <coughs> boots and underwear, so we can check your bodies. While the weary and wounded catch some sleep, Ross Pittman has something on his mind. Yes, Pittman. Sergeant, uh, 
I left my rifle in the orderly room this evening as I was on fire pickets. I believe Corporal Murray has it. Right. Um, I only left it in there for the half hour before because I thought we were going directly back to fire pickets after the first inspection. Right. OK. Not a problem. Pittman, you've reported it. Good man. I will now sort it. Thank you, Sergeant. So do not panic about it from now onwards. It is now not your problem because you've done the correct thing and the right thing by forming up and telling me. Because you got bottle. Haven't you, Pittman? Yes, Sergeant. See, told you, we'd find it in there, Pittman. Even if we had to hunt for a million years, we'd find it. Go on, fall out, get away. The next inspection's looming, but Wolf has other plans. Get your ass into gear. What's up, Wolfie? Good, tired. Come on. The shower wakes you up, man. Well, there's a... Byers. Corporal. Watts. Corporal. Webb. Corporal. Willingham. Corporal. Wolf. 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 If Wolf has gone AWOL, he has betrayed his corporal's trust. Live the dream. I need more of an adventure. Got bored. Okay. They're letters from Wolf, that's confirming that he's gone. Given that we're minutes behind him, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to catch him up. Which way is he likely to go out? He must have talked about it. The main gate. He said if, it, if he was going to go out, he'd use the main gate, because it wouldn't be too hard. Right. Or the back way, so... The back way being over there? I think so. Through the plateau or through that back gate there? It'll either be there or there. Right. Wolf! He comes out from the block, comes across there, across here, up here, pulls down there and goes over. What concerns me is if he's gone over the fence, he's got nowhere to go. He can head for the station, but he's got to wait for the first train to come in before he can first, do anything. He'll be no loss to the section whatsoever. I actually think they'll function better without him and they may even start winning things because he has a leadership quality that is just crap. When was the last time anyone saw Wolf? This morning, sir. What time? About 3 a.m., sir. Where was he? In the billet, sir. So did anyone see Wolf go? I've no, seen so. him. Okay, I'm gonna get some sleep. Carry on. Thank you, sir. Wolf has sneaked back into the camp. He thinks he's got away with it. Outside now. Outside now. Get outside! Not you lot! Not you lot! Just the shit he's put me in the mood for the day. Mark time! Get your knees up. Get them up. Get them up. Halt! Stand there. Face me. Get your great coat off. Yeah, let me help you. Turn to your right. Get in here. Get in here! Why have you come back? 
uh, because I didn't intend to leave permanently. I just needed some time off outside the goldfish bowl to kind of re recollect my thoughts. And do you want to stay? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. But it's not down to Wolf. In the 1950s, his fate would have been determined by the army. One section are already two men down. They can ill afford to lose another. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, Corporal! I ask you this once and once only, and I want a straight answer. Do you want him back? Yes, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Why? He's one of the team, Corporal. Forget the team thing. Forget loyalty, because he's shown you no loyalty. I feel that's what's been slowing us down. I want Wolf to go. The platoon commander will have the final say. Whether he comes or he goes, this section will now go forward 100%. Get yourselves away for a wash and give some thought to the missing link. Look on the upside, lads. We're beating two section on AWOLs. In the 50s, any recruit caught going AWOL was paraded in front of his officer. Right, Will! That's right, that's right, that's right! Mark time! Get him up! Get him up! You have not listened once to any of the orders given to you by your non-commissioned officers. When I say move, I want you to the top of these stairs here. Now! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Come on, get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Are you 23819236 Private Wolf? Yes, sir. Wolf, you are charged that on the 10th of June at 0400 hours you went absent without leave, contrary to Section 7 of the Army Act 1955. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. Whilst Wolf awaits his punishment, one section await their corporal. Do I need to inspect the room, Honzig? No, corporal! Why not? Jury recruits already inspected it, corporal! Who's a duty recruit? Cut Corporal! When did that happen? We nominated him, Corporal, because he was good for the role. We nominated him? Instead of Wolf, Corporal! So we're now running a democracy in one section, are we? No, Corporal! Democratic vote. Why are you constantly smiling, Andre? Because you're our section leader, Corporal. And I make you laugh, do I? No, Corporal, because I'm happy to be here, Corporal. You all think this basic training is a film, don't you? And at the end, you're going to come shining through and win everything. Pittman, why are you shaking your head? We'd like to win everything, but I don't think that we're that complacent in our beliefs, Corporal. That we're that complacent in our beliefs. Was that worded correctly? No, Corporal. <laughs> I don't believe we're that complacent in our beliefs. <laughs> You're all tired, aren't you? Yes, yes sir, Corporal. I've been up all night. So I'm tired as well. I would not ask you to do anything that I can't or haven't done before. Get your kit put away. I thought I had a bad grasp of the English language, but when it comes to being complacent about our own beliefs... <laughs> I can't do it. Bob, Well, before I give you your sentence, Wolf, I'd like to tell you a few home truths. You came in front of me just under three weeks ago, and I had great expectations of yourself. Potential officer, excellent school, good background. However, you have disappointed myself and the remainder of the platoon. 
then you have the audacity to miss my parade at 0400 hours when the rest of the platoon was standing out there waiting for you. And you decide to go for a little walk over the fence. You then change your mind and decide to come back to this training establishment. Well, frankly, we're not impressed. None of us. Potential officer, you will struggle to become a private. My award is that you will be back squatted to 526 platoon. Sergeant Sullivan. This ain't that time! Back squatting meant restarting basic training from scratch, a most dreaded punishment. Private Wolf will be booted out of Lad's army. John Sullivan, could you about turn the platoon, please? Yeah, platoon. Hey, about ten. Stand easy. Morning, Waterloo platoon. Morning, sir. How are we doing? Well, I just want to talk to you for a couple of seconds about Private Wolf. Private Wolf will no longer be with the platoon. He's been back squatted. Private Wolf is a disgrace to this regiment and to you as a platoon. He's let down the section, he's let down the platoon, he's let down the training staff. Is that understood? Yes, yes sir. OK, have a good morning. Carry on. Thank you, sir. It's time for the corporals to bid their fond farewells. You are weak. You lack judgment. You have no leadership qualities. You are piss. I think to be in here, you've got to be humble. You've got to know that you're a piece of shit. When they tell you you're a piece of shit, you've got to know that, yes, you are. <coughs> Spot on. Good observation. I am a piece of shit. You can't come in thinking, I'm not a piece of shit. I am the dogs. Because they'll just, it's harder for you then. Congratulations, Wolf. Get them on and get that uniform off that I've worked so hard to wear. Get it off and get that crap on. Do it now. Lads, have you noticed yet no. that every time someone's left that we thought could hack this, we've just pushed on? Yeah. No, I still reckon we'll push on. Yeah. Hurry up, Wolf. I don't want you on this camp any longer than we have to have you. Get away. Get off my camp. Get away. Get away, Gil! Get a gate open! Go anywhere you want, just go! I left them with no option. I feel that the, the rules are there. I think uh, everybody knew that if, if you went uh, AWOL, then uh, you were to be back squatted or sent over the wall. It was a fair decision. I think they felt that there was a lesson to be learnt, and I feel I've taken that on board, and, uh, and, and we'll move forward from this. It's an hour before Revali. In one section, the lads are still asleep in their beds. But over in two section, they're getting up early for a dawn raid on the enemy. Scotsman Gordon Hamilton is armed with an ancient weapon in the art of psychological warfare. There's just a week to go until the lads complete their basic training. Only one team can win the all-important section competition. So far, two section have outclassed their rivals. It's not just about the winning, it is about wanting to be the best. Everyone's put in so much that second place would be uh, last place. I don't know what the scores are, but I think they're close. I don't think, that, I don't think the game's been won by a long, by a long way. We've got a, a hard week ahead. I think the worst thing to, is to get to the parade and be told that you're the losing side. Over in one section, being the losing side is a distinct possibility. 
but their mood is defiant. I do think we will win, because um, we are behind, like, we are a bit behind at the moment, but I don't think it's as far <laughs> as everyone makes out. Um, they've won two sporting events, and I think that's the only time they've been on top. In general, we're, we're picking up the pace a bit. As the competition mounts, there's a rehearsal for the passing out parade. Dressed immaculately, the lads will perform a complex series of drill manoeuvres. At the parade, an award will be given for the champion recruit. But until that's decided, Corporal Nyokas fills in. Oh, Corporal, well done. Thank you very much, sir. Nice to see you. I, I worked really hard. Go get away, you bluffer. And, uh, get away. Get away. Thank you. Go! Tap. Shall it! Shall it first! Shall it! Get away! Go on! Get out of it! It's no laughing matter for one recruit. Jamie Dodd suffers from flat feet, and at the moment, they hurt too much to drill. He's fed up watching from the sidelines. But Dodd spends most of his time confined to his billet. Gentlemen, as I call your name, come to attention and reply, Sant, so I know you're here. At a bow! Sant! <coughs> Dodd! Sant! Frightening. Frightening. Eagle! He's desperate not to fall behind with his training, and unless his feet improve, he'll be discharged on medical grounds. We've got young Dodd carrying an injury who is so good for morale within the section, uh, I can't even contemplate getting rid of him. It's just a matter of finding the right role for Private Dodd. You often find characters in the army. There are some that stand out. Dodd is one of those that stands out. He is, I believe, a one-man party. He, he could make people happy at a funeral. In the 1950s, national servicemen were sent all over the world to defend the remnants of the British Empire. To prepare them for their encounters with Johnny Foreigner, the army took its love of dressing up to extremes, with some exotic exercises. An Arab village somewhere east of Suez? The fact is that British troops are darn good actors. And here comes the villain of the piece. He's a sheikh who wants to oust the village chief in a wicked takeover bid. The village will be very nice. Yeah. Seconds. Yeah. This morning, the boys are about to relive a bit of history. Dressed in authentic tea towels and blankets, one section are playing a group of restless natives, rebelling against the rule of British law. Instead of rocks, they get to throw water bombs. You can throw these at them. All right, it's not going to hurt. What are you ducking for? <laughs> Two section will play the British Army sent in to subdue the rioters and rescue a prince and princess from their evil clutches. They will come up and they will be hitting you with everything. Coming up in your face, they'll be coming right up like this, looking at you, spitting at you. You will not move your head, do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. You will look straight down the line and you will carry out the orders. As the Bren guns open fire with blank ammunition, one section refused to take it lying down. But two section have a human tank on their side. He's called Corporal Murray. All's going to plan until Corporal Murray commits a fatal error and drops the princess on her head. The exercise is over. Corporal Murray seems to have enjoyed himself. A few of them have now got a bloody nose. I don't really care. Pittman tried to come back in. Well, he's now taken out. Corporal Nyokas came in. He's taken out. I don't care. When they get aggressive, we turn the screw. But it's one section who are the winners. Boys, I'm pleased with you. Well done. Even when Honzik copped something in the face. And I saw you panic. And you just carried on and tried to do your job. All right, that was good. Everybody else, well done. If only you'd been doing that since day one. It's a turning point for them, and especially for Michael Honzik. He's emerging at the head of his section's bid to regain lost ground. 
Right, boys. Yes, go, go, go. How's the mood? Good, go, go, go. Are we, we missing? Competition, what? We won the competition, Corporal. You won something? Yes, Corporal, but Corporal Murray didn't admit to it, Corporal. All oh, right, OK. I'm not saying that we can uh, we can snatch it from the clutches of two sections, but we can certainly look the better section. Are we in agreement? Yes, yes Corporal! I want nothing but up morale from now on. All right? No downers. Even when Honzig's in his locker, I want you all smiling. All right? Yes, yes, See you later, lads. Work hard from now on, all right? No grumbling. It's not just the lads who are desperate to win the section competition. In real life, Joe Murray's a para with 22 years military experience. His secret for success? Meticulous attention to detail. His ongoing obsession with razor blades continues unabated. Yeah, I know it's up. Water, Corporal. Which will make the blade go. Rusty, Corporal. Which means you will get... Infected, Corporal. Infected. Hurry up, get off him. Get outside, get round that block. Move fast. Gentlemen, we are getting into the field soon. You will catch diseases if you do not pay attention to detail. Eagle. Tell me. Water, Corporal. Which will. Go rusty, Corporal. Which will? Cause infections, Corporal. Cause infections. You know what to do. Get them. Get them in the block. Water, Corporal. Disease, rust. I'm going. In his day job, Richard Niogas is an army training instructor. It's not as glamorous as the Paras, but he's determined to show Corporal Murray that there's more to good soldiering than a crack regiment. He decides to remind his lads about the dangers of complacency. Why are those blankets in there like that? Why aren't they folded? Why? I didn't fold them, Corporal. Sort of <coughs> makes a slight <coughs> mockery of your room inspection, don't you think? Yes, yes Corporal! <laughs> Honzik, I believe, Corporal. Honzik! Honzik! Are you taking the piss out of me? Corporal! What is that doing in there? Gentlemen, do not start <laughs> switching off in your last week. Do you understand? Yes, sir, Do Corporal. not, because I will get pissed off. And if I get pissed off, you will get pissed off as well. Sort it out! Oh, why does that always happen to me? To cap it all, someone's left a mug outside. God, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> ah! Come here, give it here, The lads are about to experience a National Service rite of passage. Today's lecture is going to be about weapons of mass destruction. This is the weapon of mass destruction that you're familiar with. What is that? Red 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 okay. Do you remember this? <laughs> Do you remember that weapon of mass destruction? Yes, Corporal. Everybody experienced the weapon of mass destruction? Yes, Corporal. OK, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a, a film that will give you information to protect and look after your weapon. What's that? Pint. Pint of lager, isn't it? Pint of beer. This is what you're looking forward to when you pass out, if you're looking to pass out. Beer, women, man. 
problems. Understand? <laughs> yeah. Say that again. Spires, beer, women, man, problems. Okay. Pay attention. Your lives depend upon it. It is the experience of most reasonable men that promiscuous sexual behaviour rarely leads to any durable happiness. Syphilis, you should realise this at the outset, is a killer. From ten days to ten weeks later, a sore called the chancre appears at the site of infection. The most important rule is perhaps the most obvious one. Don't go out drinking in mixed company. <laughs> <laughs> A girl who allows herself to be picked up by strangers and doesn't mind drinking with them isn't likely to be too particular. That's put me off of any sexual activity for the rest of my life. That was disgusting, but yeah, I'm looking forward to going back into the real world. Maybe make some of my own films, you know? So it's like I had to do it. <laughs> they will be like unsprung uh, coils um, when they leave this camp and watch out for any females or males that may be passing by. It's the weekly muster parade with the dreaded company sergeant major. To prove he's no slacker, Jamie Dodd is stepping out with the lads, defying medical orders. Standard eyes! Even the simplest bit of drill is agonizing. But this morning, flat feet are the least of his problems. Look down. What's that there? Brasso, sir. So what is it doing on your brasses? You're supposed to polish it off. Name? Dodds, sir. Dodds will show his brasses correctly cleaned. Sir. Not only you haven't cleaned the front of your brasses, you haven't done the back either. Why haven't you cleaned them? Why haven't you cleaned them? To get some Bollocks! Get up earlier or get away from breakfast quicker. You clean your kit, do you understand? Yes, sir! Dodds, in it? Yes, sir. Dodds in the report, bad order. Sir. Stay, Pato! Tag! Tag! Dodd, answer me. You had more time than anybody. You were in your bed all day yesterday, lying there. You could have cleaned the whole section's back brasses, couldn't you? Yes, Corporal. Don't you ever say you never had time? Ever! You're on report. And that's not all. Dodd has been summoned to see the medic. OK, stand as if you were standing to attention. Stand up straight, put your feet heels together, that's it. OK, and your feet are really are pushing down on the arch, aren't they? Yes, go for it. All right, sit back down, put your trainer back on. Yeah. What are you thinking? I don't think I'll be able to do the assault course tomorrow. No. But I, I think I could drill. So do you think that you would be able to catch up within X amount of time? I think I could. As an experienced soldier like myself, I think you couldn't. I'll leave you here for a minute. OK? Thank you, Gough. You've got a minute. Now his only hope is Captain Owen. If he feels Dodd is essential for the morale of one section, he can overrule the medic. But he won't decide for another 24 hours. I've yet to see what the platoon commander's going to say, but I'd be happy to carry the soldier to the end just to keep the morale section going. I believe if I lose Private Dodd, then that is a section totally deflated. I might even go myself. In fact, I might just, we might just all clear off if Dodd goes. Back at the billet, the news has spread about Dodd's visit to the medic. Honzik decides to take action. I'm going to go and speak to the OC and then just tell them how important that Jamie is to our platoon because there's not one person in this room now that our section can do without. They must, they must take it into account because, it, all right, if no one went forward and said, oh, well, why is Jamie going home? He's important. Then I guess they'd think, oh, well, He's told everyone he's going on, they're not bothered. But we are bothered, that's why I'm going to go. And we'll see what the score is. Hold on, Sig! Come here! 
Sergeant Sullivan has got wind of Honzik's plan. He's not impressed. So you want to see the platoon commander? Yes, sir. You are so important, are you, no, that Sergeant. you can get to see the platoon commander? No, Sergeant. Yeah? A low-life recruit who has no existence beyond training wants to see the platoon commander. Does he? Yes, Sergeant. He doesn't think that his section corporals or his platoon sergeant can sort it out. Is that correct? I do, Sergeant. You think that we can't sort it. Is that so? No, Sergeant. Right. So why do you want to see the platoon commander, then? Are we not sufficient for you, Honzig? No, Sergeant. What do you think you're going to achieve by seeing the platoon commander, Honzig? You're going to change army policy, are you, Honzig? No, Sergeant. I understand this is not a democracy, but I'd like to make known our section's thoughts. Do you? So yes, what no. makes you the solid spokesman in your section, Honzig? What makes you better than anybody else in your section? Nothing, Sergeant, but they've put me forward, Sergeant. Right, listen in. When I tell you, get to the bottom of the stairs and wait. Yes, Sergeant. Now! Michael has matured immensely in the last three weeks. He's not the same person who got off that bus. He was stood in just outside, laughing his head off, couldn't stop giggling, thrown into his locker every two seconds. In three weeks, he's become a, a very strong young man, and he is a leader, and he can only go from strength to strength from this. You want to speak to me? We wanted to make it clear that we wanted a uh, private dad to stay. And well, it's not up to you to decide, and it's not up to you to tell anyone that you want private dad to stay. Is that firstly, is that understood? Yes, sir. OK, go on. We'd like him to stay because he is a large member of our team. He's good for morale. You saw yourself how good he was in the NAFI the other night. He wrote all the songs. However, what you should be aware of is that this is not a social club. Yes, sir. This is not, you know, this depot is not designed to have people who are good for morale. Yes, it's sir. not designed to have people who are good in the NAFI. We're, we're training here to produce professional fighting soldiers. So what's going to happen in battle? So if Dodd goes down and gets shot, is the whole section going to stop doing the attack, is it? And yes, rally sir. around Dodd? It is. Because we're a team, sir, and we don't need a man. Well, that's not sir. acceptable. Yes, sir. You're here to learn how to be professional soldiers, not how to be mates. The end goal is to destroy the enemy rather than being destroyed yourself. Is that understood? Understood, sir. Right, Honzik. Um, I'm giving this some thought anyway. Regardless, however, let the section know that we will not be swayed one way or the other and the decision rests with myself yes, and sir. not with the section. We fully understand that, sir. OK. <laughs> With only a week to go until the awards for champion and most improved recruits, Captain Owen has called a meeting to run through his options. In line for best recruit is David Gardner. I don't think that the Sergeant Major would have any particular reason to pick on me now, except for possibly the fact I'm about three feet shorter than everyone else. He's always smiling, he's yeah. always enthusiastic. Um, yeah. you know, I think he raises the tone, certainly, for yeah. the rest of the guys. I see he's definitely in front. Also in with a chance, Tony Ellis. I know that... You know, things, when things are tough, if you just keep going, that you can work yourself out of pretty much anything. When he started that cross-country race, unbeknownst to me, he had a rib injury. And he completed that, and he was breathing at his ass. He was trying to difficult to breathe, and he had that injury. To that me, that is guts. Student James Willingham is in the running for most improved recruit. There'd be two words that I'd use to sum myself up, and they'd be bone idle. He's going to come back a new man. No, I don't think it will change me. He's a different person to the man I like. Attitude? Ten. And after his recent performance, Corporal Nyokis sticks his neck out and proposes laughing boy, Michael Honzik. I describe myself as cheeky, loud, confident, mischievous, intelligent, likeable, humorous, and most of all, fun. Honzik's 18 years old and in the past three weeks has matured yeah. immensely. The section themselves have are basically looking to him for leadership. And he's the youngest boy in that room, and on the first day, they, they wouldn't have gone near him. And now, they're looking to him for leadership. 18 years old, I, I think he's got something. Out of the running altogether is Jamie Dodd. Dodd. Uh, he's going to be ungraded on everything, with the exception of attitude, for which he scores a town. His turnout was absolutely abysmal this morning. He looked like he'd slept in his kit for three days. And to me, that's part of attitude. Um, I understand he's, you know, he's a bit down at the moment because he can't join in with everything else, but there's no excuse for just... I mean, I even asked him, I said, when did you last press your kit? And he said, two days ago. As Dodd's future hangs in the balance, 
His teammates in one section are psyching themselves up for the next major team event, a gruelling assault course. This sort of course is really important today, we've got to win it. As long as we give it our all, 120 million percent, then I'll be happy. I think slowly but surely we're coming back now, and I think today is really promising with the assault course. I think that could really bring it back for us. We're definitely important, we need to win today. It's like, we have to win, basically. But there's now a question mark over the fitness of their key recruit. Michael Honzik's got a swollen ankle, but he's determined to be there for his team. You are the sickies, put your hands up. One, two, three. You're a sickie as well, aren't you? No, Sergeant. Yes, you bloody well are. No, Sergeant. Shut up. You will be there. You had swollen feet. You didn't want to, don't you dare answer I me back. Today, Shut Sergeant. up. You will pray with the sickies. Right, when I say go, start to get yourself organised. Go! I don't want to know. Go, I've told you when to pray. Go away. Go away! Go away! Honzik's back chat is a mistake. If there's one thing the army demands more than enthusiasm, it's obedience. Who the do you think you are? Who do you think you are? If a sergeant talks to you and tells you what you're doing, that's what you're doing, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! You will do as you told. I don't give a f I'm in one section or two section. If anybody tells you to do something, you don't chat back, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! You get the f shell and get on the square. Move! Move before I punch your face out! Crawl. Have you ever talk back again, do you understand? Yes, Corporal! If you still get ready, people. Trust me, I don't give a <laughs> Crawling over a parade square with a 62-pound shell is never fun. But Private Honzik is about to pay the ultimate price for his cheek. You are staying behind whether you like it or not, and you will do as you're told. Do you understand? Yes, bro. As the rest of the lads leave for the assault course, Honzik remains behind with the rest of the injured to receive a further punishment. Right, Isaac, stand attention. I'm not going to waste my breath on you anymore. I'm fed up, and so is Sergeant Sullivan, of you not doing what we tell you. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Sergeant! I'm not wasting my time anymore on you, because you are a bag of shit, as far as I'm concerned, and should not be here. Look what I've got here. <laughs> a bucket of coal. Every piece I want lined up along here, and I want painted white. And when I get back tonight, if there's one piece that's not painted white, or I don't think it's white enough, I will get the whole platoon on your behalf painting that whole coal bunker. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. So if you don't do this, the whole platoon will be punished because of you. Yes, sir. Because I'm fed up with you. Do I make myself yes, clear? Yes, sir. Right. Get to work. The lads have travelled to Purbright in Surrey to tackle one of the Army's biggest assault courses, which dates back to the days of national service. First round the course is one section. Remember, the clock stops when the last man finishes the last obstacle. It's about teamwork, it's about pulling together and attacking every obstacle with grit. They may talk the talk, but this is no time to walk the walk. Down on section. What section you are about? Now get on with it. You should be out of that obstacle by now. Pull me out. Pull me out. Their hearts in the right place, but one section are a shambles. If one section have done badly, 
they don't seem to have noticed. We played with each other. Oh, it'll take, I think it'll take quite a good effort to beat that. That's all. Yeah. Now two section are under starter's orders. Best effort. Oh! The section's weakest link is needlework expert Adam Spires. But the team are determined to pull him through. Spires is dragged over most of the obstacles. But he still manages to fall over and wind himself. Go to the end, go to the end, that way, down there. I think they, I think I let him down. I know all through that, I've put in more than 200% effort. Ah, oh, well. Every cloud has a silver lining. With Spires out of the running, Two Section can now race ahead. Come on, Two Section! Right, lads, that concludes the assault course. It's hard work, it's tiring, it's designed to be. Against the clock, one section with nine men. <laughs> Finish the course in 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Two section, having lost one man due to injury, finished the course in eight minutes, 57. Well done, two section. The platoon returns to admire the fruit of Honzik's labours. His loyalty to Waterloo platoon is not in question, but he's either deaf or insane. It's not what Sergeant Roberts requested. This morning, I punished a soldier for a misdemeanor. I told that man to paint the coal white, and I told him to lay it in a line. Does this look like a line? Does it look like a... Light. No, no, it no, it doesn't, does it? It's a mess. It's not even painted white. That's not white, is it? No, 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 no. Therefore, there's a coal bunker over there. We need coal painted white for the parade next week. You people can paint that coal bunker and all the coal in there white tonight. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Sergeant! Now say thank you to Hunswick for your night off. Thank you, Hunswick! Now we've got plenty of coal. I just need to keep my trap shut and think of RSV. Oh. Tea break! <laughs> well, if you won't come to me, I'll come to you. Oh, you're doing a great job here. Christine? Yeah? Do you want to pick up a, a brush on your way down? <laughs> the coal is arranged around the parade square to provide a decorative edge. It seems to make Sergeant Sullivan happy anyway. It's the age-old story of if it moves, salute it, and if it doesn't move, paint it. And then once they've laid it out, you get to move it and lay it out somewhere else. That's been on the cards. We were going to do that call no matter what. The, the try and put it across as if it's Hansik's fault and he should have had it in the line, but it doesn't matter a damn. Ultimately, you've had to paint that coal. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, where these brushes appeared in the nappy is a, <laughs> a few, few days ago. What do you need yeah. brushes for? <laughs> You know. With only five days left until the passing out parade, every spare moment is now spent rehearsing for the big day. It's still not clear if the flat-footed Dodd will take part, but his wait is almost over. In just one hour, he's up before Captain Owen. Standing alongside Dodd is Aaron Larson. He's just been medically discharged by Captain Owen because of a boxing injury to his eye. It's not a good omen. I'm afraid, Dodd, that as you're aware, you've got a long-term medical problem. Yes, sir. Um, after much deliberation and thought, there is no way you can pass out with the platoon. Uh, I know that you wanted to, I know the rest of the section wanted to. They'll all be very sorry to see you go. But unfortunately, there's no way that you can pass out in the army. That's it, I'm afraid. Have you got any points for me? Any questions? Anything no, you'd like sir. to say? Um, 
It's been the best time of my life, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you should know that your section rallied round earlier, and uh, as you're probably aware, Honzik had a word with me, as yes, did Willingham. Um, but unfortunately, it's just one of those things, and nothing we can do about that. Thanks for your efforts, anyway. Thank you, sir. I wish you luck. Okay. And it wasn't an easy decision for anybody to make. It's quite popular. OK, but there is just no way around it. No, quite You would have been ripped apart in the next week watching the lads getting ready for exercise, yeah. getting ready to pass out, and then standing down there watching them, you couldn't have handled it. I couldn't have had, I wasn't handling it very well today. As you said this morning, you're still a part of the section. It's difficult now, but as time goes by, come Saturday when you're out walking your dog or drinking a beer with your mate, all right, you'll reflect on it and you'll feel a little bit better. OK? It's Just hold it together. We're going to have the naffy open tonight. And go in there, play a few songs for the boys. Have a little bit of a shindig. Sounds good, Cop. OK. You're the best, Cop. <laughs> Go! Spell my name. This guy is torturing me on a daily basis, and all I want to do is, is please him and make him proud. I forget everything I've said about him. He's a mean old man. I'm not prepared for your fate to suffer. From now on, I want dog be carried everywhere. Happy? Yeah, cool. OK. I just want it all to be over, and I'm going to give him a big hug. <laughs> gutted. <laughs> Absolutely gutted. I love the Corporal Man I love that man. I think he's the best guy around. I'm getting the rest. I want his address. I'm going to go live with him. I'm getting up with 6.15 with you lot again. You can start off. <laughs> I'm getting up at 11. It's been brilliant, lads. I've loved it. I really have. The top geezers. Oh, Michael. Michael, Michael. 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 It's time for Dodd to return his kit. This stuff stinks. After three weeks of life without deodorant, his uniform can almost walk back to the stores on its own. The billets in the mornings don't smell too good. Any, any platoon, any section, will always have a guy in there that's, that has an odour stronger than other people. Um, the guys tend to put up with it because they become used to it. Excuse me. That's disgusting. Oh. That's even worse. The, the way I would deal with that is to for me, personally, is not to go into the billet too often. Out of the kindness of his heart, Sergeant Roberts organises a special shower for the platoon. Mission granted, God. Why have you got your underpants on back to front, you weirdo? <laughs> Everyone has <else> got <laughs> <laughs> Get in there! Well, get in with it! Don't get in, don't waste some water. Go on, get in there. In the Nuffy, there's time for one last verse of the platoon's ode to Corporal Niogas. Corporal Niogas, hey, you are a star. And when we get out of here, our lawyers will find out where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Free chance for watching.
Left section, the bed! Hooray! The bed! Hooray! The bed! Hooray! Right, Dodd, Larson, I hate to do this to you boys, but you've got five minutes and then you've got to go. Always remember, there's a difference between not making it and physically being medexed, all right? Yeah, yeah. There is a complete difference. And these boys are being medexed. I've got to go. Got to go. Before he goes, the lads have a surprise in store for Dodd. Having missed out on a hosing down, he gets a military bath instead. Come on, have a good bath. Catch you later, guys. Bye, boys. Thanks, guys. Bye, boys. Anyway, we're never going to forget, yeah? Look after yourself. You will tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself. <laughs> I'm just going to let them know what they're missing. Step off at my pace. Hi there, uh, Frank. Quick, mate. Get back, get back, get back. <laughs> You've got nothing to be ashamed of. What you've learnt in the, in the time you've been here will beat any civilian out there. So hold your heads up and I wish you all the best of luck. OK? You've got yes, nothing sir. to be ashamed of. Keep your heads up and be proud of yourselves. Over you go. You're now civilian. Step over. Goodbye. Number 10 bus. Sunday morning at the Browndown training camp. But this isn't a day of rest, not when Corporal Murray is playing God. When I go, take your face, hurry up! Hurry up! Don't move, Kinsey. It's day 25 of basic training. There are only four days left before the lads of Waterloo Platoon will be heading back to the 21st century. If the lads survive the exercise, they'll make it to the passing out parade. But only if their boots are gleaming. Can you see the reflection in that? No, Captain. What do I keep telling you? You, outside, and help them. Oh, practice. Morning, Spires. Morning, Corporal. How's your breathing? Fine, Corporal. Well, there we go. Ah, uh, well done. Why didn't you help him? Why didn't you show him? Next door, one section get the same treatment. Why don't you show me a bit quick? You are letting this section down, you two people. What? You just can clean that up, you two, right now. You three, let them down. Get outside and help them clean up every speck. There'll be prizes at the passing out parade, if they ever get there. Why don't you put one on the floor? No, no, no. Michael Honzik, the youngest member of Waterloo Platoon, is desperate to win Most Improved Recruit. Today, all the lads are being appraised before the parade, and Corporal Nyokas isn't pulling any punches. Why are you an arse? I think I lack uh, that tiny bit more discipline that I need. You soak, don't you? I tend to a bit, Corporal. Yeah, you soak, and I've seen you soak. You were undoubtedly in line for most improved recruit. Undoubtedly. OK? You right soak. up there in the top, I don't know, say, top three. 
Friday, however, you threw all that out the window, didn't you? Yes, Corporal. That's not to say that you're not still in line. If you go out onto the exercise and you win a VC, or you manage to save the platoon from a fate worse than death, then you could be back in there. What I'm saying is you've got a lot of work to do to get back into the top ratings. Yes, Corporal. Meanwhile, it could be curtains for Adam Spires. Despite suffering badly with flu, he's still been hauled up in front of the captain, who's not impressed with his efforts. How are you finding things, Spires? Hard, sir. Yeah, I would agree with that. Drill has improved. However, still pretty poor. PT, weak. When was the last time you ironed that shirt? Two days ago, sir. Why two days ago? No, You've walked into my office with a shirt you ironed two days ago. That shows a complete lack of respect for the military and for myself, and for your, more importantly for your section corporal. Yes. Because he's now going to get it in the neck. Because I'm going to speak to Sergeant Sullivan and your section corporal, then we pulled over the coals. Yes, sir. And what do you think he's going to be doing about that? Is he going to be happy? No, sir. Do you think he's going to come and have a chat with you? Yes, sir. You, at the moment, are in line for back squatting spires. You've now got three days to impress me and the rest of the platoon staff. Otherwise, you will be going back to day one, week one, and starting with the next platoon. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Right, get away, Spires. Get your arms locked into your side when you're about to turn. As the lads scoff down a last meal before the exercise, they know that there's all to play for. Gardner is locked in a close battle for best recruit with Hamilton. Ponzik needs to buck up to win the most improved, but Willingham's breathing down his neck. And of course, Spires has to prove that he's more than just a dab hand with a needle. The next 24 hours will separate the men from the boys. Come on! Tell me you cannot afford to fall asleep at this stage of the game. Get up there, you bloody pop. Get stuck up there. Weapons inside the vehicle. Are you comfortable? No! Waterloo platoon move off to the battlefield. A stretch of MOD land five minutes down the road. They've barely passed through the gates, when all of a sudden... ..they run straight into an ambush. Platoon returned fire, but Bren gunner Dan Neal is already out of ammo. Get up there now! I've got no magazine. Get up there! I'll grab it. I'll grab it. Hitman! Hitman! Get up to the Brenton! You've got the magazines, haven't you? At the first sound of gunfire, his magazine carrier, Ross Pittman, has run the wrong way. You get your fast and Pittman! Where's that magazine? Get the other magazine out, Daly. Get the other magazine out! Hurry up! Stand by! Rapid! The enemy's withdrawn! Stand by! Move! Get back, get back! Come on, work hard! After the ambush, the lads from Waterloo Platoon fall back, regroup and hand out more ammo. It's a chance for the boys to reflect on their first taste of action.
Already battle-hardened, the lads move out once more in search of a safe harbour to set camp. It's like Vietnam, but more disorganised. They find a suitable area and set to, digging shell scrapes to lie in for the night. During the exercise, the corporals will be keeping a keen eye on all the lads to see how they perform. Spires. 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 Get your ground kit down. That's finished. Did you dig any of that? Yes. Well done. But not everyone is putting in as much effort as Spires. You know, the people are not impressed me. Are Ponzik. Holbrook, or the usual, even Neil is working like a Trojan. If um, Isaac spent as much time working yeah. as he did talking, he'd be down to Australia by now. Just tell me when you get tired now, little bit. Okay. Ponzik's standing by while his teammates dig his shell scrape. Not wise when Corporal Joe Murray's around. You better start switching on, boy, because see if you don't, I'm going to take you outside the woods and I'm going to bury you. Don't move! Do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Now get a move on! Every time you put your left foot forward, are you f***ing up? No. Every time you speak, are you upsetting Corporal Murray? I think so, Corporal. Right? Now it stops as of this moment. Yes, Corporal. You start working to impress, yes, or corporal. I will rip out your Adam's apple. Yes, Corporal. Right? Yes, Corporal. Now I'm not pissing about with you anymore, Hansig. You want to pass out on Thursday, you start putting in the hours. Yes, if you don't, you're out the gate. With everyone dug in, the lads fire up the stoves and cook their rations. I have curried lamb, uh, minced beef, which is quite minging, and ginger sponge. That was quite nice. It's just like being at Glastonbury Festival without all the music. <laughs> While some of the recruits get their heads down, Corporal Murray puts out a sentry team to keep watch. No one will be breaking into this camp tonight. It's the hand signals, I forget what the hand signals. Before last light, those not on sentry duty get the nighttime orders. The lads have been divided into three squads. While one team tries to sleep, the others embark on a nighttime recce. move off in two separate patrols to discover the whereabouts of the enemy. A couple of them are getting scared because of the dark. Webb is petrified. But tiredness will sort them in for the boys. Everything looks like a person in a tree. I can hear a million more things than I'd normally hear. So it keeps sounding like someone's coming, but they're not. Sergeant Roberts' patrol is first to discover the enemy camp. Two guys, smoking, talking. I'm trying to work out just how many of the enemy there is. Um, but at the minute, I'm, I'm too far away to actually get... Uh, it's very hard for me to tell how many people there is. The second patrol have also found the enemy. 
but are much closer than they would like. Steve Daly's squad almost get trampled on by the enemy sentries. <laughs> With the enemy positions plotted, Waterloo Platoon can now plan tomorrow's attack. After a long and restless night, the lads wake up knowing there's still a lot of fighting to do. Most are too tired and too cold to think about the big battle ahead. Despite the discomfort, everyone's aware that this is the last chance to impress before the passing out parade. Captain Owen assembles his troops to run through the details of the morning's big attack. OK, information. Enemy forces, roughly 15 men, heavily armed. 30 cal machine guns, 50 cal ma machine guns, MG42. So they have a hell of a lot of firepower there. Gardner was a guy who actually carried out the operation last night on the enemy target. He's going to explain the model and just break down the ground slightly for you. The map is where our recce group went last night and came into contact with the enemy. It's approximately 150 yards along this track to where the enemy was situated. Waterloo platoon stay in their squads to make a three-pronged attack on the enemy positions. Corporal Nyokis heads one section, Corporal Murray takes charge of two, and Sergeant Roberts follows up with three section. The lads are worried. No one's going to die, of course. Everyone is using blanks. But the prospect of letting the officers down is mortifying. The enemy is well armed and dug in along a single defensive line. The platoon's mission? To attack head on and take the positions. Stand still, stand still. Right, I want everybody through here in point three of a second. Ready? As soon as that bang goes, forward, shooting. Two sections, follow me, come on. Let's go. Go. Let's go, go. 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 Just go. Go, 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 come on. has its hero, and today it's young Michael Honzik. With Corporal Nyokas on the Bren gun, Honzik takes responsibility for the section. Waterloo platoon make a final push and close in on the enemy positions. The enemy is put to flight, and Corporal Murray presses home the advantage. Rapid fire! Rapid fire! It's a victory, but there have been casualties, hand-picked, of course, by the officers, and there were no shortage of volunteers to play dead. Well done for Waterloo Platoon, and they move out with their heads held high. The lads did well, took up the position. I thought the withdrawal was good. Um, so well it's... Yeah, I think um, what you've got to appreciate here is that the guys have got a lot of disciplines to learn, and it's only been three, four weeks. It was a good effort all round. I'm proud of them, yeah.
The lads are happy to be back at camp, but not everyone is relaxed. With the awards at the Passing Out Parade tomorrow, Michael Honzik is still thinking about his chances for most improved recruit. The officers meet to make their final decisions. Corporal Nyokis reckons that Honzik's done enough, but it seems that he might have a battle on his hands to convince the others. Yes, Sergeant. Where'd you come, <laughs> <laughs> He's worked with the team, for the team, since day one. Wasn't he the guy that was dropping the, the whole section in the ship from day one and getting them beasted? It's like a Jekyll and Hyde transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. During that attack, he was <laughs> outstanding. There's four individuals who were up for the champion recruit prior. Ellis, Gardner, Hamilton and Leyland. In terms of the actual scores here, they're all within one of each other. OK, Hamilton. Hamilton, sir. Yeah. A superhuman effort on the assault course, I have to say. PT. And lastly, the officers discuss the fate of Adam Spires. Yeah, I think you have OK, to... Spires. Bless his cotton socks. Leave it as five, sir. Okay. He tries hard. It's the morning of the passing out parade, and the officers have organised a special Mark goodbye revali. Stay in bed. Stay in bed. For once, the lads are forced to stay in bed to enjoy the military tradition of gunfire. A cup of tea laced with plenty of rum. Like, see, muscles you never knew you had. <laughs> Look at that here. The knees here. Hey. For the next hour, discipline goes out of the window as the lads go demob crazy. Whoa, 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 watch this house. <laughs> Grenade. <laughs> Corporals are getting into the spirit of it all. This is the last time that we will carry out an inspection in this billet. It saddens me. I feel somewhat touched. I've got to be touched to be here, haven't you? I am a firm believer in finishing as we started. Everybody, come here. Quickly! Look, is it me or is there confusion? Confusion, Corporal. Is it me or is there confusion? Confusion, Corporal! Bedbox, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first time that Copeland's untidy bedbox has got him into bother. It all started back on day one. <laughs> Four weeks of basic training have clearly made a man of Jody Copeland. Go. Cheer up, Blanket! <laughs> Stop being confused. Come on. I've got to pass out today. <laughs> Get happy. It's only hours to go before the passing out parade. The lads will soon be reunited with their family and friends. They haven't spoken to them or seen them for four long weeks. And Kenny Poulter's worried his baby boy won't recognise him. The platoon's other dad, Dan Neal, has mixed feelings about leaving. We've been gearing up to this sort of since since the beginning, obviously, and looking forward to seeing family and friends. But um, it's going to be really sad because, personally, for me, um, 
I've got a little boy at home, so obviously I've got a lot of commitment. So I don't really see friends as much as perhaps as most people my age do. And it's been really nice for four weeks having sort of 14 other guys around me to sort of chat to, you know, just when you feel like it. And um, although I've missed family and friends, um, I'm really going to miss this. The lads won't just miss each other. Today they will also have to say goodbye to the fatherly figures of Corporals Murray and Niokis. I told the lads last night, they have all earned my respect. And they've, they've achieved something that other people could only imagine. You know, they're not doing this for me. They're doing this for themselves. And, and they've achieved that aim. Uh, and their parents will notice the difference. Their parents might not like me, but uh, I'm not here to be liked. Families and friends have travelled hundreds of miles from across the country. Michael Honzik's mum and girlfriend Gemma have made the long journey from Middlesbrough, and mum's in tears before she's even seen her son. He'll be happy that it's finished. And he's able to see everybody. The lads are fired up. Stop being nervous. You've done it before. But Corporal Murray still checks that everything is perfect. So you better learn it. Sort these belts out. Come on. Guest of honour is ex-National Service man Jim Bowen. You are now looking at a very, very depressed, dejected 64-year-old ex-National Serviceman. Half our generation said that National Service should stay and should be good for everyone. And we all said from age 40 onwards that youngsters in the year 2000 couldn't cut the pressure of training that we did in National Service. I am appalled to say that you guys have done what we did in six weeks. You've done in four. You did it. Right. Well done. It's time for the awards, and there's no surprise when two section wins best section. But who'll take the individual honours? Awards for Waterloo Platoon! Champion recruit, Waterloo Platoon! Pat Gardner! Gardner, who never put a foot wrong, is awarded best recruit. Most improved recruit, Waterloo Platoon, Pat William! And reluctant hero Private Willingham claims the most improved recruit award. Like a good soldier, Honzik keeps a stiff upper lip.
perfect passing out, but the crowd will still have to wait to see their boys. First, the lads have to say goodbye to soldiering. At the quartermaster's stores, they hand back their trusty rifles. The 300 friends and family are waiting to welcome the boys back to Civvy Street. The lads are marched back onto the square one last time to await the sergeant's final command to fall out. Parade was amazing. It it was it summed it all up. It, it done it. It done it justice. I think it'll feel different later on, or even tomorrow morning, when you wake up next to your missus instead of fourteen other blokes. <laughs> <laughs> National service would be a credit to the country. I reckon. It's, uh, it's definitely opened my eyes. As Waterloo platoon disband, even Corporal Murray shows his softer side. Thirty fresh-faced lads walked through the gates of Browndown Army Camp four weeks ago. Only 24 made the grade as national servicemen. I've got total respect for the guys that went through national service, so when I go back and some old folks start talking about war stories again, I'm just going to listen to it, not try and take the mix, which I've done before. If I had to do this in the 1950s, I really don't know how I'd survive. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience, I'll never forget it. We met some absolutely brilliant people and we had a really good laugh. And I'd definitely, definitely do it again. If you think you're hard enough, then come on, try it. We did it, so I'm sure so other people out there can.